Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. All right, let's do it. Let's roll. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Four Player Podcast. Uh, welcome to... Uh, I, I think we decided the numbers don't matter anymore. It's February 6th, 2024. I'm your host, Nick Henderson, and I'm joined by Brad Simons. Wait a minute. But if the numbers don't matter anymore, then what am I going to save this file as? Holy shit. He's got a good point. February 6th, 2024. Yeah, there we go. Oh, God I damn it, no could. I mean... Like that. Here's the thing. I'm a, I'm a creature of habit too. I always put the the episode number in the title, and I'm not going to break that habit very easily. So maybe it's inevitable. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 782 of Four Player Podcast. Woo! I'm your host Nick Henderson, joined tonight by Brad Simons. That's so many. That's crazy. <laughs> it's so many, and it's N- Nolan's here. Hello, Nolan. Hey, how's it going, everybody? And Christopher Davis, of course. It's like we've been doing this for 15 years straight. You know, I think we just got to stop talking about the passage of time in general. Um, Mm. Because, you know, when you think about it, we're just we just like to talk about video games. We're just here to talk to our friends about video games. And there's no, you know, the amount of time you've been doing that. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't fucking matter. So who cares? Who cares? Um and with that in mind, we're here to talk about more video games. Uh, and it's been kind of a big week. Um, we're going to talk about, strangely enough, two state of plays in the span of one week. So we'll talk. We'll kind of go over what happened last week. Because last week we were talking about predictions. It, it's in, it's kind of an unfortunate timing situation because we did our predictions, and then like the next day when I posted the show, it was like the day of the actual thing. So anybody who listens to the audio podcast was like, "Well, I already know what happened." So. We're actually going to kind of re- recap that a little bit. And then today there was a state of play talk focused on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which Nolan actually played the demo for and has some footage. And we're going to take a look at that and talk about it. Um, and it's also been kind of a weird... Or, I mean, I think it's... You know, when you talk about Silent Hill these days, it's it's always weird. We're going to talk about the, sh- the, the short message. Um... Among other things. Oh, and Brad, of course. Uh, how could I forget? Brad is ready and ready are ready and waiting to talk about like a dragon shut up shut up chris davis like a dragon infinite wealth <laughs> how much of that have you played so far uh brad um you know in chapter five okay 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 point is got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight um before we get to that uh quick want to quick remind everybody that uh our game of the year content is about 90 percent out there Uh, Chris Davis has finished the final video, which is his own, and uh, that'll be out uh, tomorrow. I don't know. Are we releasing to supporters tomorrow, or gonna go? You want to go public tomorrow? I don't. We'll do supporters tomorrow, and then Thursday we'll do everyone else. Okay. So if you're a paid supporter on Twitch or Patreon, you can find a link to Chris Davis. In fact, probably tonight before uh, I go to bed, I'll put that video up in the supporters channel in our Discord. No, you will not. Oh, I'm sorry. You haven't exported the final video yet, have you? No, no, I have okay. not. And I am very glad that I have not because you pointed out this evening that I forgot to turn on the intro music. So yeah, it was. I thought I thought my uh, my headphones were broken. I was like, what? There's no set. There's no no. What, what's going on? There was oh, no man, sound. It was like that Tom Cruise mummy trailer. You know, <laughs> did that but happen? Basically, yeah. You don't remember that, Nick? I don't remember that. What happened? Was, yeah. They they released the trailer and it was all just like the vocals. There was no like audio or like oh, background no. noise. So it's like, like the scene where the channel. Channel. yeah, yeah, like the where the plane gets like blown up or whatever. They get sucked out, but it's just like it's just him, just like 
no, but there's like no. nothing else in the background. Yes, there's bad. no fucking know. way. He he went to a therapist and got that trauma <laughs> removed from his memory because they, oh, he, people yeah. dared to make fun of Tom Cruise. Wait, are you talking about me? Yeah. You think I'm like that big of a Tom Cruise fan or something? Is that is that, that is small that the joke of here? a Tom Cruise fan? That's pretty I mean, funny. I mean, uh, no, I, you know I still haven't seen that that Mummy movie by the way because uh, I can't <laughs> I can't get I can't get my wife to agree to watch it because it's it's blasphemy to watch that one and not the uh, 1999 uh, classic with starring Brendan but... Fraser. Somewhat unhinged being such a big Mummy fan, but then again, like I I can't get. Malia to watch. I mean, I don't want to watch them. Is probably the main reason I didn't keep trying to make it happen. But it did bother me a lot that she refused to watch that uh, Harry Potter spinoff series, Fantastic Beasts. Which one? Yeah, she's uh, like oh, I've yeah, never no, seen them. I will bad. never watch them. I don't care, and I'm not. not and and it was. Good. It wasn't because like people thought they were not as good. Like she's just like I don't know what that is, and I don't care to watch it. Like that's crazy. That's that crazy. is a little that's strange. A prequel. I mean, you're saying this because she's a, she's a Harry Potter fan, right? So it's it's yeah, kind of strange. She's a, yeah, she's a big Harry Potter fan. That is Brad. That's that's the equivalent of not watching the the prequels, episodes one, two, and three of Star Wars. That's the exact same concept. Which back then I wouldn't have understood that. Now <laughs> I understand that. Hey, there's a lot of people who will come for you if you say that now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I do they? not fear those. People. Well, you're welcome, yeah. those people. I do not fear those young children. God damn it, Nolan. <laughs> Okay, I should maybe rephrase that. Oh no, it's too Anyways. late. It's already. It's, we're we're keeping in the edit. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's staying <laughs> in. Um, what? How do we? Where? How do we even get here? I don't even know where we are. Game of the year stuff. Let me just finish the little pitch here. So, uh, you you'll be able to watch Chris Davis's video if you're a supporter tomorrow. Carlos's and he's video. Making however, big promises. It's gonna be a big one, y'all. You I've are w- not ready for what he's about to deliver. He's been p- building it up for weeks I have now. Seen you are not prepared. I have seen Chris Davis's video. Chris Davis has popped into our chat at least once a day in Discord to say, Porches. you guys aren't Pitchforks. ready. I have opinions and I say them. And I was, and, he, and I, I went in there the other day. I was like, Chris Davis, these better be the most unhinged, controversial opinions ever put on tape. There's, um, there's a pretty unhinged one in there. Uh, oh my God. We it's get really it. not. We know. It, it's I, just funny I, because, you know, Everyone probably guessed exactly what it was that hey, you hey. thought was so unhinged. I'll say this. His list consistently surprised me, but uh, he did, I don't think he's going to get canceled for this list. <laughs> you know, he was, kind was of what talking he's like it sound he was like. going to get canceled. <laughs> um, Look, no, that, that's if I'm I sure I would have liked to that RoboCop game as well if I had played it. But, you know. So I think you might be, be surprised yeah. by his placement of that game on that list. Um I know all the secrets. Uh, anyways, keep your eyes peeled for that. Carlos's video is out now, uh, and you know, instant classic. Car- Carlos's video. It's an instant classic for, as far as Carlos videos go. Um, I do think it's. You sincere. know what I found out? He replaced that one that involved you, Nick. Uh, it was originally El Paso elsewhere, and he decided to take that off and to put on that bit. I was like, motherfucker, we needed more people talking about that game. And you, yeah, and you it's, it's his fault. That game's not going to be on our overall game of the year list, uh, which, by the way, oh I God. know the I know the ranking now. OK, I okay. know the final ranking. Congratulations, Zelda. Good. Good job. <laughs> I just want you to know, Brad, I want you. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this here because we have there's people watching and I feel like it's a public place <laughs> kind of so I can say this safely. Um, <laughs> this is I just want you to remember this, Brad, whatever happens. This is not my fault. Okay. I this is I not blame, my fault. A little. I blame Ed more than I blame Nolan. Oh, that's because good. Yeah, I, was, Ed, I, thought, I thought he was going to say I blame <laughs> Nolan. I, I blame Ed more than I blame Nolan because one Ed submitted a list, right? And he also like played lots of games and lots of those games. And that yeah. motherfucker, th- the same stigma that you put on that game of just like I just cannot be done. You know, kept it him does from still feel games. very un. It does feel and, very and, and, unwieldy. And I'm starting to worry that Chris Davis was doing the numbers and like decided to like put Star Wars or, or, or some shit up high, way higher than Baldur's Gate or something. Just despite you, no, I don't think that's, I don't think that's no. what, happened, what happened here. Um, don't worry. Did, did you play Zelda, Chris Davis? Yeah. Yes, 
I played mm. a lot of Zelda. Hey, honestly, I, mean, I didn't even realize. Zelda, so that, that's why I feel like there was like three games on Chris Davis's list that I was like, holy shit, I didn't even realize he played that. That's cool. Right. Um, anyways, keep an eye out for the list. You can watch my list out there. You can watch Brad's list. Uh, you can watch Ed's list. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, go to, we, Nolan, we appreciate your game of the year. Just just tell us your game of the year. Go. Oh, dude, I don't even know. I'd have to go pull down. back up my it list of games Zelda. that I Come played on. this year. I mean, don't get me wrong. Zelda's pretty high up there for sure. It, I, I'm it's maybe maybe Dave the Diver. You could just lie and say Baldur's Gate three and see if that I does anything to our ranking. Zero seconds of Baldur's yeah. Gate. Yeah, but I'm saying you I'm, could just lie. You I'm, the, just lie. I am the, I'm the I am the Santa Claus of four player podcasts. I know when you're lying. Is that Santa Claus? Does Santa Claus know when you're lying? I Santa Claus knows. He knows if you're being bad or good. Which is, you know, if you're if you're lying, you're being bad. So he knows. Yeah, right? but he also logic, is watching you while you sleep. Out. It's a little creepy, you know. Okay, so here's the deal. Here, I have some people in chat asking, where's the community top 10? And here's what, here's what I say. Now that I have the final ranking, I have all the lists, including the community ranking. And just, just so you're aware... The way I come up with the final ranking is I, I put all of our I all of the lists through the same point system, all the games on all the lists through the same point system. It's all the staff lists up against the com the overall community top ten. So I take that list that was created by the, the the whole community and that just works as a another list. And I put that all together through the same system, and I rank them with points, and then I order them and blah blah blah. I have the final ranking. And now that I have that, this weekend, I'm going to be updating the front page of 4playernetwork.com with that new game uh, year in review ranking. I'll make a post with the uh, with the community top 10 so you can kind of so you can all see what, what it is, and I'll share that with everybody. So, uh, one, thank you to everybody who submitted their own personal list and helped, helped us come up with that. Uh, it has more impact than you probably realize. And uh, thank you to everyone who tunes in to watch our videos. I know some of them are long-winded. Some of them are... Are are uh, are just you know wild. Uh, they got some girth. We, they got some girth, but we appreciate anyone who takes the time to watch our videos, comment on them, comment on them, talk to us about them in Discord and all that stuff. We really, really, really appreciate it. So uh, get out there, watch those lists if you haven't. We really appreciate it. And uh, with that, let's let's get past this. I don't think I have much in the way of fancy critic updates because you we didn't have any attention. bids from we didn't no no, no no we didn't have any bids from last week because we. we, cause we no, no. We talked about we that. Have any so any, well, there was no there was no bids to. For, no, I like mean, oh, you mean like, out with scores? Oh, oh, oh. Um, well, so uh, on my list, I got uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, hmm. uh, and that's sitting that's sitting you know at an eighty one, which you know that's honestly I was kind of expecting it 82. to be somewhere between eighty and eighty five. So it's actually eighty two, yeah. It's bouncing. It's been bouncing back and forth between eighty one and eighty two a lot. So that doesn't necessarily surprise me. Um, and I think that's the only new thing with points since last week, since we last recorded. So. Um, but uh, yeah, you and, all, you know, uh, you all oh, covered okay. pers Persona 3. Yeah, we talked about Persona yeah. 3 and okay. and Like a Dragon. Um, right, cool. Tekken. No, Actually, are you no gonna... I don't think we did talk Persona last time. Well, in case we which didn't. is at an 89. Yeah, which it's is... sitting pretty at an 89, which I'm I'm I've Damn started. It. I'm I'm playing that right now. That was uh, my next one. That was my next one. And I was going next after Nolan. Well, Brad, Brad with that logic, I was going to bid on Infinite Wealth. I was going to bid on, uh, no, no, no. Uh, you know, it was uh, literally Knight, like I was next and it was next hey, on my list. Do you remember when I was pick. next and I was going to I was going to close out my my bid with Earthblade and then you fucking Shut Yanked up! It. That one's way less interesting. You don't even—you had not even played Celeste. Damn you! I have played Celeste now, by the way. It's pretty good. Oh yeah, now you have. No, no, no. You, now you listen to us telling you how good that game well, is. I knew, I knew it was good. I knew it was good. So, can I just say real quick? I have spent an unhealthy amount of time trying to get strawberries in that game, even though right up, right un up front, it tells you the strawberries mean nothing. They give you mm -hmm. nothing except for bragging mm -hmm. rights. And I was like, oh well, that'll make this a little bit easier no i cannot stop trying to get these stupid strawberries it's such a, it's such a weird it's, psychology yeah no it, it definitely is and it, it's a it's a similar thing with like neon white it's like mm. one of those things where it's like there's no reason that i need to outscore brad 
But it's like, I kind of do before I will let myself move on to the next level. Because the thing is, if I move on to the next level, I'm going to become rusty on this level. So I got to do it now while it's fresh, while I got the muscle memory. You're, you're and right. it's a similar thing for Celeste. You have to. It, oh, yeah. No, it's a similar thing for Celeste. Like, you kind of know what's going on. So if you get the strawberries now, you don't have to come back later when you've now forgotten because you've done, like, ten other levels. The weird but thing, you know, though, Nick, true strength is letting go. I know, and I'm not deciding strong. you don't need to get the strong. I know, I know, and that's here's the thing: the the the, the incredibly stupid thing about it. It's like it's kind of I'm kind of the same way with like trophies or, or 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 achievements or whatever. When I see an achievement that's like within reach, I'm like, I've got to get it. But it's like I feel like if you either get all the achievements or it doesn't, it shouldn't matter at all, right? And I feel like it's kind of the no. same. Strawberries. Like, why am I busting my ass trying to get these strawberries when I know in my head I'm not going to come back through here and 100% this game and get all the strawberries because I'm not a crazy person. Uh, well, I feel I don't compelled know. that's to also I don't weird. Know. Crazy. That's that's boy math or girl math or whatever you want to call it. You know, is it though? It's okay to want to get some, and even though you're not going to get them all, I mean, I mean, some. I mean, they are fun. They're fun to get. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. But like, but I'm I. And I don't. I'm assuming. I'm. I'm going to say this number, and I'm assuming it's kind of a shared uh, experience or whatever. But like, the third or fourth level of Celeste, you know how it gives you your death count at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I died over six hundred times in one level. Is that normal? Is that everybody's uh, experience? I mean, if you're trying I, to I go would, for strawberries, yeah. Okay, I would have to I go am, back and I look was. at it. Can can you see if I were to like boot up the game now, would it tell me? I think so. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you still have your save. The thing is, we all forgot Nick because oh, yeah. that game came out a very long time ago. I know. Well, you know what? This is yeah. a video game podcast. Things come up, they weave Nick, in and uh, out of, of of relevance here. I got the uh, collect eighty strawberries achievement on January twenty seventh, twenty eighteen. You know what? Also came out a very long time ago. I'm sitting at like Final fifty Fantasy, something. Final Fantasy seven. It did come out a long time ago, Brad. You're not wrong. Y'all want to just do this? Y'all want to just do this now? You want to talk about what the fuck else reboot? are we doing? This is what I mean, we're, we're here just, to do. We're a podcast. We're just talking about shit. Let's okay, real quick before we get into so Nolan, you actually played the demo. So I so hold on, hey, let's 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 roll your reel it in, roll everything back. So multiple times you've said I have played it. Yes, I have booted up the demo and played some of it. I have not finished the demo because from what I'm aware of, the demo is like at least a little over an hour and a half. And I think I only played it for like 40 minutes. So I'm probably like halfway through the demo. Gotcha. There's still a yeah. whole lot more of the demo I've yet to well, play. Well, you've, you've played I, enough to, to, to kind of see what they're doing, what they're going for with the demo and with the game and everything. Yes. So and before we... they're going to be releasing an update for the demo that has content outside of Junon uh, later this month. Yeah, yeah, I saw yep. that. So real quick, before we get into the, the you know, Nolan's impressions, Brad, what can you say about like I kind of the overall I presentation? Fuck all y'all. Like, that's the thing. The demo's cool. It's cool. But, like, something happened today, and it was like, if you had been watching it, you all of us, we would have all been here tonight to say, oh, the next best video game ever is coming out right away. You know, who who would have thought that a year after, like, Baldur's Gate 3 and, and fucking tears of the kingdom would we be anywhere near another best game of all time and let me tell you after watching this you're really today, that hype on this huh I, that's what i'm saying i wanted y'all to watch that shit this it's it makes that last this shit that last game is like a fucking joke compared to the shit i saw today that okay it's go on. on this is this is the game we dreamed of all those years well, ago, Chris Davis could be playing footage while we demo. talk about this. They showed a yeah, little tech good. demo right. of Cloud jumping off of the train, you know, when the PS3 was shown or whatever. And this is the shit we've dreamed of since then. And it didn't yeah. happen in that last game. It's happening now. I'm telling you. Well, that they're that adding, they're adding never... stuff to this game that they did not have to add to in terms of like things you can do in the game. And it's like oh, for sure. they are. They are not just delivering what we dreamed of. They are prom they're doing more. And that is crazy. So so hold on. It's crazy. So so to to to, to echo or to kind of comment on what Prince said in chat. Um I can still be hyped without seeing that demo do the the you know state of play thing today. I, it's not that I didn't watch the state of play because I don't like Final Fantasy. I clearly like it because I played the demo. I didn't watch the state of play because it came out at an awkward time. And like if this yeah. had come out yesterday. 
I would have watched the whole fucking thing before the podcast tonight, but the problem yeah, is it came a couple hours before the podcast, regardless. Yeah. Um, yes, I agree with you, Brad, um, that they are doing stuff that they didn't need to do um, from what I've seen so far. Um, we kind of already knew that from the you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake um, to an extent. I, I, I know like what you're saying is that what we see now makes something that was amazing at the time look bad uh, or not bad, but like look minuscule in comparison. And that's fine. Um, but I, I want to like echo the, the statement of they're doing things that they didn't have to do in a good way. Um, I feel that if we had gotten a straight one for one final fantasy seven remake, a lot of people really would have really liked it. But I think a lot of the, a lot of people would have been disappointed to an extent. Um, and I like the direction they're going with this game, what they're adding, how they're uh, handling certain star story beats. And obviously we still don't technically know what's going to happen, uh, especially based on how Final Fantasy VII Remake ended. Um, we don't know exactly what we have in store for us uh, story-wise, but I would kind of liken it if you've, if you've seen the... Uh, the recent, uh, oh, I forget what it's called. What, the, what is the Scott Pilgrim show on Netflix? Scott Pilgrim. Isn't it just Scott Pilgrim? Like, well, the, the movie is Scott Pilgrim versus the world, but this one is Scott Pilgrim takes off. Takes off? Ah, yes, yes, like yes. Yeah, thank, yeah, thanks, Gary. Takes off. Um, and if you haven't seen that, I don't want to spoil stuff, but it kind of goes a different direction from the movie in a good way. Um, I think originally when we first heard about it, we thought it was going to be a one-to-one -one remake. Oh, all the voice actors are back or the, the characters from the movie are re re reprising their roles as voice actors. And we just thought it was going to be a one-for-one -one remake, which would have been good. Uh, but I honestly really like that they changed it up. They subverted and made it a expectations bit different. in a really cool yeah. way. And I think the ending of Final Fantasy VII Remake gave us that same feeling. That we're yeah. like, ooh, with what we've just seen, who the fuck knows what's going to happen? Um, and so far, at least what I've played of this demo, once again, I've not watched all of the um, the footage from the state of play today. Earlier, before we started recording, when Brad had mentioned something about it, I pulled it up and realized that, oh, it's actually a, a lot did happen in that state of play that I missed. So I am going to go back and watch it. But the yeah. next point as well. Uh, there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to play this game. Yeah, and uh, it's I not really even enjoy about Final being Fantasy. right or wrong or when we're going to be hyped. I just want it to be hyped here tonight because it's crazy. Dude, I'm already hyped from from playing the demo. One of the things that was nice um, when you boot up the demo, and I'm sure it'll be the same thing when you boot up the final game, is there's a, a recap of, uh, you know, like a literal five minute recap of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, and it's just like a, a quick thing. Uh, being voiced over by Red Thirteen, um, of hey, here's everything that happened uh, in. Final oh, that's Radio. nice. Cla yeah, no, it's a nice little five minute recap, just like hey, here's what happened. Uh, now it's a good refresher. Obviously, slightly different uh, from the original game, but even if you had played the original game ten times, it's always nice to get a quick refresh. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, and so this game, uh, the demo at least, is the 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 flashback in final fantasy 7 when you go to nibbleheim and when you meet uh or you find out you know tifa was there and a little more backstory on on cloud and sephiroth um and it literally starts off exactly like the game uh you know it's the soldiers in the back of the truck and clouds like antsy and he can't sit still and he's doing like squats and stuff and sephiroth's like oh man these kids blah 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 um and so it, it's nice that, you know, that's there. And, and so so someone's going to have to correct me if I'm wrong. I have played Final Fantasy VII probably in a two, while, maybe three times, but it's been a hot minute. Yeah. Um, I don't recall if when you're in this flashback, is it a straight up flashback or is it a story being told? Mm. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? So, okay, yeah, exactly. So uh, in this demo, which obviously will be in the game, it is Cloud telling the story of Sephiroth and how he his backstory and him and Tifa. And so every once in a while, it pulls you out of the flashback the to the present day. I don't think yeah. the original is that way. Well, but I mean, again, yeah, it, it is because you actually remember, don't they like stop and let you save, right? Like this is you're talking about the calm stuff, right? The yeah. flashback when you go to calm. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Well, so at least in this demo, like I said, I just honestly do not remember because it's been so long. Uh, Wait, but is as it an calm example, or is it 
Sorry, keep going. Oh, yeah, that was when the big flashback happened. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Um, in this, uh, there's a there's a point where um you go up to your house, and um, I can't remember. So you, you literally, it's it looks like you know you're just cloud walking up to a door, and it kind of pulls you out a little bit, and it, it's you hear you know cloud and like Aerith talking, and and he's like, oh, I don't know, I don't want to tell you about my my childhood, and they're like, oh, please tell us, tell us, and then you have the option. Yes, I'm going to tell them, or no, I'm not. Oh, and I chose yes. I'm assuming if I saw, if I said no, he wouldn't have gone in the house and like kind of cut to that. Um, but there, there seemed to be like kind of a little bit of uh, free agency of yeah, being able to choose what you do. Um, and then obviously, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit before um, with remake in that you have a world that was Final Fantasy VII that was kind of limited. Uh, you know, it was flat backgrounds uh of stuff it wasn't full fledged out environments but where this is so you are kind of going around interacting with some people uh doing workouts uh with yeah, there's like little kind of mini games and stuff like that 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 really make the world feel full and i think it's one of those things where when we originally kind of started talking about oh a final fantasy 7 remake we were like what would that even be um you know there are certain elements that don't translate from old school Final Fantasy or old school PlayStation one games to modern right. PS five games. But I feel like they really have done a good job of making that conversion. Uh, and like I said, taking the core elements, story characters of se- of seven and bring it into a, a, a modern game. I also um, think so at, like at said, some point, the expectation for like a remake of Final Fantasy seven was that like, in order to even make that work, it was going to have to be, stylized like it would have to remain a stylized game because there's no way because the game the world of final Fantasy 7 was huge like how the hell do you translate that into like a modern video game and obviously their answer was well we split it up into three games and mm-hmm. you know and you know do kind of weird stuff or we we, we kind of remix the story or whatever which is great it's exciting uh, does this demo give you any kind of taste of like the bigger open spaces or is it is it, it's not it, open it, spaces. It, it's a seamless connected world. Well, I know, but like, does the demo give you the taste from, of that? From, from what I've played so far, no. Uh, the only part, so what I played in this is the, uh, you know, it kind of starts briefly in the right where uh, the seven remake ends. Um, and then it's everyone kind of hanging out. And, you know, Barrett's like, okay, you really got to tell us more about the Sephiroth guy. And then it does the flashback to, to Nibelheim. Um, you do a couple things in Nibelheim and then now we're on our way to the reactor. Um, yeah. I mean, we all know what happens in the reactor. I haven't gotten there. I don't know exactly what happens in the demo. Um, if, if you could go completely through it, um, uh, but sorry, sorry, let me rephrase where I'm at in the demo. I just got to the reactor, you know, fighting enemies, stuff like that. Um, passing around. It's one of those things where like, I, so no, I do not know what the quote big open worlds are going to be or what it's going to be like. That being said, I know that's something that people have always kind of talked about uh, when saying, "Oh, how could they translate seven to a modern game?" The, the the thing is, the big open worlds were big, empty, flat areas with random enemy encounters in seven. There, there was nothing there. I would much prefer a a a slightly linear winding path of environments with a couple of stops along the way uh to a big empty space That's true. i, I yeah. think i think back to final fantasy 10 um i forget that what the area was called uh but it's the one where you get the like titus's sigil for his uh, his ultimate weapon mm-hmm. um it, it's like a big open area and yet there's just there's nothing there it's just a big open nothingness and it's like, well, that's boring. I would rather have something like more like concise and linear, uh, a couple of battles, uh, maybe an interesting stop where they have some small conversation, a couple of boxes to break. And then I'm back to the to the actual game. If, if it's not going to be a straight up open world uh, game, then just make it make it uh, more succinct. But as Brad does say, it does seem to be going in that direction, right? Like, I'm assuming they say stuff about that during the presentation about about the open world, Brad. Well, I mean, they say okay. it's a seamless connected world. <laughs> you know, you know, what, 
because uh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure what you were getting at in terms of my reception to this game or my lack of excitement or my excitement. I don't know yeah. what's going on with that conversation. That's what I'm saying I'm saying well, you don't watch stuff that much. I but... do actually. I, just, I I explained why I wasn't able to watch this one and why I still haven't. No, but I, it's not no. like I made a but conscious I'm decision to no like I'm gonna not going to watch it tomorrow. This. And Chris Davis was never going to watch it. And you're you're also not going to watch it. And I hate I you. S- I didn't say that. But I don't you know, care what you say. I'm saying I know you, motherfucker. Okay, fair enough. But you uh, know, I well, just wanted to ask a technical game. question for, of Nolan real quick. What's up? So in this in the demo, you you went to a pause menu like right now, and it showed mm-hmm. Cloud being level forty. Mm-hmm. Do we know if Rebirth is going to allow you to import your progress from the previous game? That's a good question. I pro- I would assume they probably would. Um, but that's not something that they obviously the demo covered exactly. It just gave me, you know, hey, you're level 40. Here's some materia. Here's some skills. So okay. but I, I would assume it would. I, I don't know why they wouldn't. I, I assume um, I, I guess the question would be is, is how does that affect players who never played remake and they're starting from scratch? Um, do they get, you know, do you, what benefit do you get Um from having played remake, maybe they give you some extra like potions or stuff. Like, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. I don't have the answer to it at the moment though. Okay. Don't pay attention to uh, the camera angles. I'm, you know, I'm just, <laughs> God damn it. I was just thinking that like, it, uh, no <laughs> if you complete the demo, the game gives you a Kubo pod, uh, that mm. you can use to unlock content in the final game. So mm-hmm. I know there's the, that level of carryover uh, stuff, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just, you know, when I think back to my time with the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which, again, I did really, really, really like that game. In fact, I, I once again, it made my list that year just barely. And the things that that kept that game from being at the very top of my list and the things that made me that make me a little worried or concerned going into this, if there is any concern going into this, which I'm not even necessarily saying there is, but like. I remember being, and maybe this is just kind of the way. This now that I, you know, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bring what up what you're about of, to say is hilarious considering the state of play today. Okay, I don't know what to tell you about that, but Final, like Final Fantasy 16, even you know Final Fantasy 15 uh, mm-hmm. as well. Going back, like maybe it's just the state of Final Fantasy, modern Final Fantasy in general these days, but like. The side quests specifically, which has always been like a huge part of Final Fantasy, going all the way back to, you know, as far as with my history of the series, which goes back to Final Fantasy VII being the first one I ever played. Side quests were a big deal and they were they were they easily accounted for most of my gameplay time with these games. And to say that the side quests in the part one or Final Fantasy VII remake part one were boring and bad would be an under yeah yeah they were kind of boring and bad in that very linear game and they but they weren't resemble 16 this at all. Too, hey, is... 15, they weren't bad there was actually some like really crazy optional content in 15 Wait, which one in 15 in 15 yeah i, I don't remember That's, specifically I, I, a lot of the stuff from 15 i i would make the argument there there was a few side quests in 15 that were better than the main story okay that's fair i mean there's that's like this whole unrealistic like, either crazy dungeon okay whatever it, yeah, but look, you I, look. I don't want to say. I mean, ne- we've disagreed about it in the past. About yeah, you really hated those side quests, but we've we've so it's so like we've had that conversation let's, so many yeah, times. Yeah, let's not and dwell so on not that relevant anymore for for the sh- for the sheer fact that if you if you go back play Final Fantasy VII OG game, get out your your discs, um, play it, and you go from where that game begins to where final fantasy remake ends there's no side quests that the, the, they just don't exist in that kind of part of the game um so yeah i think they probably had to throw in a couple of things just to give players that that autonomy that option people like having some choices people Make like feel like an rpg to, yeah yeah take a break from the story for a minute to kind of like r- relax their brain or kind of do some fetchy type stuff or maybe something they can like kind of grind a few times to get the best score or unlock a better item be if you you know those challenges in seven where it's like you have to like knock down the boxes or whatever in a certain amount of time and if you got the best score you got some materia or something um so they had to throw in a couple of those but yes I, that part of the game is just very linear and there's not really too many options for side quests 
to Brad's I mean, point, I, like I said, I have not seen the state of play yet. I'm assuming we're going to have a lot more um, optional open world type things. And that's the and thing, this right? Like, like it, and it's, it's not just side quests, like stories or whatever, I guess that you thought were kind of like mid, right. Go fight some things and come back. But like the sheer amount of like, it, it's almost like watching a Yakuza game trailer was watching this shit of like, and we're going to talk about Yakuza in a second. There's just so much stuff to do. Like not even talking about little, little, whatever this character says and tells me to go kill. No, it, there is like fucking systems and shit in there. It looks crazy. They put Gwent in this game. God damn it. And, and I know no one here played that Yuffie DLC, but they put a significant, like I mini did. game thing in there as well that was like fucking cool and like all I, i'm telling you like that's the surprise shit of this game is that they're making it like a yakuza game and that's the thing right final fantasy 7 was famous for like the mini game stuff on the side and, it, and it's not like that stuff was deep but it's many years later and they're making that stuff deep it seems like in cool ways and that's really exciting like 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 main story it's gonna be like nostalgia like crazy the music is gonna be crazy they were even like playing some tracks like listen to this banger and listen to this banger and listen to this banger and they're like 400 new songs this shit's gonna be crazy and 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 you know what they're fucking right but huh. there's shit it seems like this is a hundred hour game easy after watching this thing because oh, it yeah. just seems like there is Great. so Another much one. stuff to lose time playing just like a yakuza game right and 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 it it looks fun and good and like some of the things they're doing like like visually with some of that shit is so cool and man man like this you know, is it, the it, game it's, it's, this is the dream game it wasn't that last thing which was cool this is the dream game that's and, exciting I, I i'm really glad to hear you say that it's what's crazy to me is that like if this is the dream game it almost like it's like how did how did they because this game obviously looks like it's going to be bigger in almost every way than that original game. It's like it's like how in the world do they turn around and make this game, which is way bigger than that first game, and and how many years it's been like three? It's been because three years. They, they've been making lots yeah. of games for a long time, but I'm telling you, this is the first time. Like I mean, they got the foundation. Like, like you got to understand place, so. that first game was Midgar, right? Right. And when that game and mm -hmm. like how are you gonna do a whole game on Midgar? And it's like, oh, you 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 did more than just Midgar, you made this whole big game and that was cool. They're making everything the you, rest after Midgar up to you know a certain point, yeah, right? The, and that, a and that is a question I think everybody and, has. and it feels like that. It doesn't feel like you know, small, like it's not like, oh, big, huge game is just Midgar. And then the next game is going to be the same size. So they're going to have to condense everything down. No, this feels like proportionate, proportionally. Right. This, Final Fantasy VII Remake is the equivalent of Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Well, it is, is it? <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes is like two hours. But yeah. Um... I've played a lot of Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Yes, while the story from start to finish is two hours, there's a lot in that game. Trust I me, mean, like it's 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 more than you remember. That being said, yes, I was being I was saying that they most yeah. likely put out Final Fantasy VII remake um, as a hey, here's what we're working on. Here is Hell a, of a teaser. small sample uh, of what is to come. Uh, if we wait, made you wait for the final game, it would be another 10 years. We can't do that. We have to put something out. Um, so here's the first part of the game as a as a, a hors d'oeuvre, a, a taster, if you will, of, of the... Also, we need some help funding the rest of... <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. From what I've seen in yeah. this footage now it's like the vehicles are there right the vehicles are there and i'm I'm not talking just the the um you know they showed some tiny bronco in the water like you like it, i after watching this today i'm like i think they're gonna do the airship i think they're just gonna do it like not yeah, in this that next would be game, wild but i'm there saying there hasn't like, been a proper airship in final fantasy outside of i guess you could maybe say 14 if there's i'm assuming that there's airships in 14 that you can like well i don't even know those are more like fast 14, travel things aren't no, they no, no. i mean well you fly everything in 14 but it doesn't matter because the zones don't matter it's just, yeah it's like there hasn't been a proper uh, final uh, airship that you like fly around the world since nine yeah i mean 
Well, yeah, is, fourteen. But that's um, crazy. Though. It's crazy. Hmm. You know, one question I, I have. So. We we don't have to focus. We don't have to dwell on this much longer. But I I just want I want to hear what y'all's thoughts are. Like, what what do you think is the odd? Because obviously they've already said as much that this is basically three games, right? So this is not going to take us across the finish line of Final no. Fantasy VII. What is the logical stopping point? What are you talking about? The, I obviously I think we've, the, stabbed, we've the known. We know what that the is. The stab. It's, Really? I don't think the stab, dude. That dude, the stab happens a lot earlier in that game than I think you remember. You realize? No, that, yeah, that yeah. that's not and, where and you. Midgar you was were... a thirty-hour game. I, I was going to say like, the crater, maybe. Like, no, I guess no. The it's the crater. Yeah, no. If if you end it at the stab, and there is an alteration, There's still two or three games there, left. <laughs> then you need <laughs> to have not... the the reaction of the characters. You need to instill that in them. You, you got to get to a climax point beyond that. And that would be the crater in which it gets, they get kicked out. But then, but then and the, the weapons is gonna like, cause the weapons will be the big thing of the third game. No, but, but like our memories are weird, right? When, when we think about like all the nostalgia moments in final fantasy seven, they all happen before that step. I mean, there's some after the step, of course, but like so much happens before the step. It's all disc one stuff, right? Like yeah. disc three is like, you know, the, this three is literally the, side... the crater in the final boss. Yeah. And, and yeah. like well, the stuff that happens to this too, it's that. very talky and it's very drawn out, but like, it's not like as many memorable like places and like, and like moments, like it's all on disc one, man. Like, like so I... much, you know, we know Sid's in this game and, and so we're, you're going to play at the very, you know, it, so like, all the characters, all the golden saucer, like it's all there. Like yeah. I'm telling you, this is, this is going, to, I think they can absolutely play this game up until the stab. Just like I think last of us season two is going to play up until, you know, golfing. Right. Like I'm telling you, like they're going to, they're going to pace it and stretch it out in such a way that, that it's, it doesn't have to be early on the stab. Okay. So I mean, it is a remix of the story. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, that that was going to be my question. Um, what would be the bigger surprise: the stab happening, or the stab not happening? It, it not happening, or it happening to someone else? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, that. Of course, we've all been thinking it, right? Well, I yeah. Know, like, they, they so kind would of you like... be surprised if nothing changes about it? If it's well, the exact he, same? So, so here's here's why I maybe I would be, be surprised, surprised by that anymore. Like, like the One, whole setup of, of the first game is to just think that is, make us assume so, that they're going to subvert gonna care, it. We're going to care about Aerith so much in this game because she's a so, much, much better character than she ever was in that original game, right? And and again, wa after watching the shit tape, there's the whole like social link system in this game now. And by the way, you can go on a date with way more than just uh, Tifa, Aerith, and Barrett. Um, Ooh. it's I man I'm telling you it's I, I'll, I'll tell you I I don't think I don't think it's gonna happen to Aerith I think it's gonna be either Zach or Cloud okay okay I no, think no, no, you no. sacrifice I, I, the main protagonist to give the supporting cast something to gun for in the third game that would so be so I didn't I didn't finish my thought and here's why I don't think it really matters is because Remember the end of remake part one when things start to get stupid? Um, yes. <laughs> and, and oh no, Barrett died, but not really. Do you remember that shit? At yeah. that point, it kind of doesn't matter. Like, right? Like they've already like killed a character we weren't expecting and then took it back, you know, like within the span of like 10 minutes. And it's like, okay, this, you know, th that's the part I don't want to talk about. That's why I'm kind of focusing on like the stuff to do in the world and the side stuff and the fact that Gwent's in the game uh, or Triple Triad. It, it's yeah. it's more just because they're going to get dumb in Kingdom Hearts with it. And I kind of don't care what they do anymore at the stab because, like I said, they killed Barrett in that last game and then they changed their mind. So it, it's they're they they're they've played with our expectations and they've already kind of ruined it in some of those ways. And also Zach being back for me is a big giant thumbs down. So <laughs> I care about the story, but I'm there for like the nostalgia moments and the character development, which was really good in that first game. Um, so yeah, I'm just happy to spend time with Eris. And at this point I kind of want them to do it because I think I'm going to feel it even more than I did back then. 
and that's crazy to me. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. We can the move dread. on. We're, we're, it's going to be dread. Like we are literally dread. going to dread playing that game up into that moment. And it's going to, it's, they, Brad, I think they're going to do it. They're going to make us hurt all over again. What, what if, uh, to make you more upset and to expand it further and make it bigger and whatever, what if they implement like crisis core into this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm actually a remake I'm of seven and crisis core they killed donald uh, final Duck. fantasy 7 crisis core the the game no i know uh, of it i just don't know Zach. i just don't even think that happened in the game so i think he's I mean, asking specifically what do you mean by how how is crisis score going to be in this game because i don't i mean i, I, mean, I don't remember just, i don't I don't remember much of anything specifically about Crisis Core, even though I played it. Well, they remade that recently, right? And they they kind of like made it more Final Fantasy Rebirthy, so yeah. more integrated into this new. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention um, to that release. All I know is I'm excited. I don't know. You know what else you're excited about, Brad? What? like a dragon you don't know actually what do you know i mean i know you and i know like a dragon and i know those two things are intrinsically linked right you you love this game tell us um well i mean i'm not done with it or anything in fact in the grand scheme of things i'm still relatively early um i am enjoying it it is it is Yakuza in the West, you know, not quite as far West as I was hoping. I wanted the West. Um, and it's not that, although there is a cowboy class. This is Hawaii, I'm, right? I'm not unlocked. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hawaii, which, you know, has a large Japanese population, right? Um, it does. But, but let me tell you, like, this shit's weird, right? Because Yakuza has always been this series that has been very Japanese takes place in japan and is very like authentic right and you know they're getting like japanese actors and like all these places are like very authentic it's like the real deal you know um you go into a a um a uh Host don quixote and, and it's just like mm -hmm. one that you go to in japan right and this is but this is different right because this is now hawaii and now this is sort of the japanese take on a on a on a united states uh you know mm -hmm. it's it's kind of cool right because you know it's less authentic now and now it's like sort of that cool skewed take right like this is what made earthbound cool back in the this day this is right? how they see because us yeah yeah you know how <laughs> earthbound was cool back in the day because it was a japanese rpg about you know like good old you know us of a kind of like you know leave it to beaver right but it's it's weird and wrong and and that's interesting and i kind of like that about this game because um you know there's like fucking it's just different right there's like fucking orca fat people walking around you know because it's america and I guess that's accurate, but it's also kind of Orca? like absurd. Like people are like, you know, everyone's got a gun and they're just like waving guns around because it's America and they all got guns. And I'm like, okay, that dude has an AK 47, <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, I mean, <laughs> but, but I'm saying like, you're walking through, um, like, like, uh, uh, I like how they're all riding on segways in the footage. <laughs> It, but I, I love that about it because it's like kind of absurd, you know, how like everyone just has the gun. I mean, not everyone. Right. But you go into like a like a, a, a homeless encampment or whatever. And but it's not just a homeless encampment. And like everyone's just sort of waving a gun around just because America. And it's like, OK, <laughs> I Dude. guess open carry is a thing, but this is absurd. Uh, yeah. And I love that. Nick, your jaw's on the floor, and this is how I know you've never no. seen a trailer for this game. When we asked you to watch a trailer, and you said this does nothing for me. No, no, I mean it still doesn't. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't. This is not me like saying, "Oh, I want to play this now." I just it's me going. No. I look like I looked up. You're like, this is how they. This is like how they see Americans. And I look over, and he like he's riding on a Segway, and then he jumps off the Segway and goes right into a battle. And then all of a sudden, this like hula, like this like 
hula dancer comes out and starts like with with maracas and starts you know and i'm just like yeah. what I, I don't that's chicha um yeah oh, okay um chicha. Of course. No, so, so this is this is you know yakuza 7 is when they started doing the uh you know this is a your it's an ichiban game and you from the eyes of it, ichiban he sees the world like a rpg right like, um, not, and, like an rpg literally like dragon quest Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't they name drop into, Dragon Quest? He name drops Dragon Quest, yes. Yeah, yeah. And when you go into battle, you know, like the, the, the thugs on the street like transform into like, you know, like RPG, like weird Whatever their class archetypes. Is, yeah. You know, like one thing about Dragon Quest is there's really like silly enemy types, right? And this has that, right? And and they get like really silly. Like one of my fucking favorite in this game so far is they have they have like one of the enemy types are like like i guess they're like homeless people i don't know or uh unhoused people and they're like in sleeping bags like green sleeping bags and they move like like snakes or like a like a pokemon you know (laughs) they (laughs) they slither around and they like they're like but they're in like just like a a green sleeping bag and that's so fucked up it's fucking hilarious dude um but yeah, I finally unlocked the job class system, and 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 now instead of going to the job, play, uh, you know, hello work or whatever that was called from the first game, now now you mm-hmm. go on like little tours, yeah, and you get your jobs that way. So I unlocked you know the surfer and like the fire breather and stuff, and I got a hula dancer for Chichan because they can't be the same classes. She has to be girl classes, you know. They they still have their yeah. <laughs> problems this series um you know is this, one of her is job this supposed to be honolulu is, is made um or is it like I a made-up place yeah, well uh so i don't know much about hawaii and... yeah brad's like no no one is hawaii no i don't know much about hawaii it's supposed so I don't to be either where, honolulu or maui where okay, this would cause... be but in yakuza they don't call them like kamarocho is is not called Kamarocho in Tokyo, but it's like very much life. based off like okay. like the Rapungi or you know like like actual places from you know districts yeah. from Tokyo. I, did, I just I'm looking at the 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 gameplay and like I, from what I've seen so far, it very much feels like Honolulu from at least well, when so I, I was there. It, it very much has that vibe, and some of the buildings even look like some that I would remember. But yeah. I, I, I work with someone who grew up in Hawaii and mm-hmm. it's funny talking to her about, you know, like the ABC stores. Cause apparently those are like everywhere. There's a, there's a lot of them. ABC yeah, stores. And that's, what are and that's ABC sort of stores? like your, your corner store like, all over. Like 7-Eleven. Oh, okay. But here, they're, here they're I am doing a, a Sujimon battle because they're, you know, they, they had cool ideas from the first one, but now they kind of like brought those into this game and they're like fleshing them out for in, in the first game. You could collect Sujimon, which is their like Pokemon parody. But now you're actually doing Sujimon battles. And of course, like any weird Yakuza minigame, it's so much deeper than you would have ever expected. And you're just you get into like Pokemon battles all over the world. You just see them like, oh, that's a Pokemon trainer. I can go fight him. And you, <laughs> some of the the Sujibon are just fucking hilarious because they're they're all like you know it's criminals or like degenerates or whatever like they're they, you know all, all the Sujibon are are you know freakos and, it, and it's cool because when you they have like a gotcha system but it's very like tongue-in-cheek gotcha you literally go up to like one of those bubble machines to like get new pokemon and they, they got like a ticket system like do you want 10 pulls and but it's very tongue in cheek and you literally shows you like going to like the prison to like get people out of your Sujimon out of out of prison jail I to guess. recruit them <laughs> onto your side. Because I don't know, they're they yeah, were arrested be... for streaking or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's it's just it's absurd. Um <laughs> but I don't know, I'm not very far. It's you know, very strength and weakness stuff and and I don't know almost a little too level based honestly uh but i i gotta i gotta spend way more time diving into this than i have um and there's just a lot of cool new side stuff and a lot of cool quality of life stuff like you saw the segways i love how you know you could just pull out the segways whenever you want you can set a destination in the world and like go to like just hit the auto button and you'll just kind of drive there automatically uh, which is nice uh, brad's uh, segways a, a name brand 
Yeah, that's true. And, Way to bring uh, it full circle there. But, no but it runs on a battery, and there's like Segway recharge stations, so you have to like ch- pay to charge them up. But you can also like change out like you know the the look of it and stuff. It's kind of cool. Uh, and ah uh, man, there's a, there's you, a lot. There's so much going on in this game. Did you so end up playing with the Japanese voice acting? No, no, I'm playing in English. You know, even though I, you I think there's the a voice mod. Actor? Yeah, I mean, Kiryu is, is in it, the game, and he's just a party bad? member. Is it as bad as and you he's thought big, it was going to be? He's he's a big part of this game. He's a part. Yeah, no, it sucks. It sucks. It's literally, I heard someone talking about maybe a mod where every single person in the game is in English except Kiryu, which is <laughs> absurd. That, that, would, that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but let let me tell you, there's um the language barrier. So these are Japanese people who've come to Hawaii. They only speak Japanese. And sometimes they address the fact that like he doesn't understand him, even though he's speaking perfect English because it's a, a game in English to, you know, some, cor- by the way, remember I was saying everybody's got guns and everybody's huge, fat, enormous, and not just like the comic relief, like the occasional comic relief, like in a Yakuza game, there's like just huge fat people just walking around. You know? Also like the cops are like every single one is like a huge asshole and they're like super dirty. It's like, it's like, Okay, well, they watch the, a little bit of the news, I suppose, <laughs> about America, and then they decide to write up the script. But the, but it's also weird because you just like just beat the shit out of like a cop in like a boss battle. It's just the boss battle is you just this and this cop's literally trying to shoot you to death, and you're just gonna, you know, Kiryu's just gonna like smack the gun out of his hand because you know how he feels. That, you know, he's fucking a gun doesn't do anything to Kiryu. It's crazy. Um, and he's in the game and he's cool, but let me tell you. There's something about the story, and I feel like I feel like it's a spoiler, like a bad but thing or a good. It thing is a spoiler thing. that they spoiled in the trailer, like long before the game even came out. It was like the first story tra- trailer of the game. Kiryu says something, and it was like, you can't just say that in a trailer. That seems huge. That's like a huge spoiler. And are you about to say this thing for people I don't listening know. at home? Should I, I not know. say it? Like, I mean, obviously, you find don't out relatively early in the game. I mean, this is. And we also found out in a trailer. Um, also, uh, you don't care, but I know Nolan might. And, and Chris Davis, you've seen story trailers for this? Yes, I have. I know what the twist is. Well, it's not a twist. Hmm. The thing. I okay. know what the thing is. Uh, <laughs> what a twist. Uh, so Kiryu, so I feel like this is part of the setup, right? And that's why I'll say it. Uh, and it wasn't the story, tra- like the very first story trailer. The twist is surprise. Kiryu has the big C, and wait, has what? <laughs> the big C. Oh, I mean, I got, oh, he has cancer. Kiryu has oh. cancer. Oh, yeah. I was like, what is the big C? I was <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Where was but, your mind at, Nick? No, I it wasn't anywhere. I was like, I don't. I don't literally can't. Great. Like everyone who thinks this is a spoiler already knows this is a thing because it's like literally in all the trailers. Um. And like they basically but, I mean, are setting it up anyway character. in the man who erased his name. So he's also not even, he's not even the main character. But 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 here's here's the crazy part. Here's the fucking crazy part. Because I saw the trailer and if you're on media blackout, why are you fucking listening as you type spo- spoilers exclamation point into chat? I think you he's kidding. But also you gave you, you, you there was enough build up in that conversation. People yeah, should yeah, know. Yeah, 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 should was, um, and also again early in the game, it's in the trailers. It's just set up, dude. Come on um he's he's, but here's the thing that they don't show in the trailers which is the most absurd thing i've ever seen in a yakuza game and let me tell you i've seen a lot of absurd things in the conversation spoiler is this about to be a spoiler that this can be a spoiler but it's so stupid it doesn't matter Um, all right consider yourself so here you says the thing in the conversation and then they cut to why he has cancer and it is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. I thought I was like, oh, yeah, you know, like one in three people in their lifetime get cancer. Of course, he's got cancer. I mean, shit happens, right? Um, but no, no, it was a heroic moment in like a fucking I, I can't even say it. it. People who know know it's the most absurd thing. It's like, dude, you could have just let him have cancer like game? everyone else gets cancer. But no, he had to get cancer the way only the only way cure you can obtain cancer. It's it's so absurd. And it completely undercuts the emotion of the moment because you're just confused and dumbfounded and your jaw is on the floor. It is absurd. It is 
Do you want me to tell you? No, 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 no. It's I, it's I, not. I just, it's I don't think it's a big story thing. I'll tell you this. It is absurd. It okay. is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Let's just, Why let's is this during, a choice? Let's keep it during the break. And maybe that way you can okay. give people. I'll, I'll tell you, and your jaw will be on the floor. Why they? Made it. Oh, so I'm playing Crazy Taxi here. Uh, yeah, which is I cool, noticed. right? Because they had the can cart from the last one, but now it like they flesh it out and it feels a lot better. And it's like more of a mini game now. And you're just playing crazy taxi and it's rad. And, and you, here's another cool thing about this game. They just gave you like an MP3 player now. So you can actually just buy and unlock and through mini games, spending points, like get like music from the series, cool. but also other Sega franchises and just cool. create a playlist and turn on your MP3 player while you're like segueing around the world, listening to fucking music from persona, you know, it's fucking rad. And, and you know, that's, I, honestly, I bet it's a pretty good scene when uh, Ichiban gets explained to him what an MP3 player is. Well, no, I, uh, I think he, he just, I, I think he's just, you know, I think he's probably, it's just his phone. It's just an app on his phone. No one has MP3 players, but I, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, I do. you can play music while you're I have to. just roaming the world, which is cool and vibey because now, you know, you're listening to, to Friday night while, you know, it's just vibes, man. It's cool. I, this is kind of what I wanted. I want him to go to Texas, right? Because <laughs> that would be. That would have been truly absurd, but you know what? Cowboy Cure You as a job class is almost just as good. I can't wait to unlock it because holy shit, that shit looks so cool. And like the new characters are awesome, and it's like Ichiban is Ichiban, and you know how he is. He's making the most of, uh, you know, he just loves everyone and gives everyone the benefit of the doubt, and is just gonna help everyone no matter what. And it's like so rad. And it and everyone's reactions are like, I, why are you helping me? Why are you doing this? That is. The craziest thing and, and Ichiban's just like what do you mean this is wouldn't anybody do this he's just such a great character i love ichiban and i love the new side characters i have only met two of them but man party members for life um i got this more is... <laughs> you got questions y'all got questions uh oh, this is delightful just to no, look at this series has definitely followed the same trajectory as like saints row has right where the first well game... no <laughs> <laughs> doesn't exist anymore it well yeah, the developer. yeah all right aside, aside from the fact that saints row is dead uh like i mean that, that first saints row game at least i feel like that first saints row game was like trying to ape like grand theft auto a little bit so it was a little more grounded a little more serious and then yeah. as each game came out it became it became more yeah. and more and more insane i'm watching yeah. this i get more. what you're saying but there's like no there's so much more the original yakuza in this game anymore like just from like a tonal standpoint which is you know maybe not a bad thing uh, I just sure. like, I, I remember when I was working at GameStop way back in the day and I was like and it, it was really hard to come by copies of Yakuza and I finally got a copy of Yakuza in my store and I was like I'm going to buy this this game looks sick I never played it <laughs> but but I was purely interested in it because you know it was like a story game yeah. like a dramatic story game about the Yaku like but about it's always the it's always been that the main storyline is always serious and there is like nothing serious about this footage I'm watching. No, because which I'm not doing like you're not watching a main story cutscene for 20 minutes, which is, you know, often what the main story is. And, That's fair. That's fair. Side side stories have always been silly in the series, but now they have fleshed sure. them out so much more that you're, you're doing. And there's so much more of that in these games, in the mini games and stuff that it's. Yeah. I mean, you're right. There's a lot of craziness, but but the last game and this one lean into it in a way that the previous games kind of didn't like there's a, there's definitely a new balance of craziness you know like you you weren't you're fighting you know slippery dude you know you, you know tell me more like ba <laughs> battles and stuff dudes. are like <laughs> are like you know look at the people i'm getting into fights with right that that's only a yakuza 7 and 8 thing right that's yeah. not how the series was but the main story here is still like a serious thing right you know, I mean, I think I think that's cool that there's like there's like the contrast, right? I think that's neat. But uh, even in the drama, it is like absurd, right? Even when it's like dead serious, and that's some of the charm of Yakuza. Like the last game, it was about two babies mixed at birth because two completely unrelated incidents, completely unrelated, led to which you know, by people who were connected but the we're situation that led that led babies, someone putting right? a baby hiding a baby in a coin locker 
putting a baby in a coin locker, you know, and then yep. someone else was supposed to get the baby out of the coin locker. By the way, someone else in an unrelated incident also put their baby in a coin locker right next to that locker <laughs> to the point when somebody beats the door open to get the baby out of the coin locker. They get the wrong baby. They get the wrong baby out of the I wrong coin locker, about which that. just so God. happened to be right next to the other coin locker with the baby in it. And oh, by the way, yeah, it's a completely serious emotional played for seriousness. But main story beat is also mm-hmm. absurd. So I love this fucking series. Oh, by the way, there is a you can go on the trolley uh, yeah. to yeah. to go around the, the 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 world. But you can also pull out your camera and do like sicko Pokemon Snap, where you take pictures of sickos popping out, <laughs> doing like you know deviant things and what? get points. Oh no! <laughs> but but you so you got to time it right. You know, like Charizard blowing his fire, you got to get the sicko like thrusting or whatever to get maximum <laughs> points. It's it's a great series. Oh, it's, it I'm, is. Yeah, it really sold. is. That sounds pretty great. <laughs> no. uh, okay. Um, also, yeah. also, when you when you in phone mode, you know, when you're doing like selfies and stuff, and they have all the filters and shit, you do the D pad for expressions. For whatever reason. Ichiban screams the expression at the top of his lungs as you press the button. He'll be like, do a silly face. And you press it again. He'll be like, do a silly face. Do a silly face. And I don't know why he's screaming the name of the expression. Do a sad face. Do a a happy face. Every time. And I don't understand why. And you could spam it. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I think think it's, you know, I don't think it matters why he's doing it. I think I yeah. think it's charming. The, Anyways, uh, the main theme to um to Valkyria Chronicles, you can just buy on like a C, uh, you know on your phone on your little MP3 player playlist and jam to it That's while you it. stroll around town. That's jam to it while you're strolling around town. Okay, <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. All right, uh, let's take a quick break, guys. When we come back on the other side, I want to have a little conversation about Silent Hill. I also want to talk about what did actually transpire during last week's State of Play. And then, of course, we'll wrap up with the four-player minute, as we always do. So if you're watching us live or listening at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Anyways, welcome back to the show, everybody video games let's keep going um okay before we talk about the state of play i have some thoughts i have it's been been a week right i've been trying to gather my reactions my thoughts about what's transpired recently with silent hill or Mm, with silent hill uh in in general well i mean i think people a lot of people were kind of like Nick, how do you feel about this? How, oh my God, it's happening. What do you think? What is this? this? And people like breathing down my neck, like trying to figure out. True, obviously, true. I've, been a, I've been a Silent Hill fan for a very, very, very long time. Silent Hill 2 in particular is in my top 10 games of all time. It's in my top five games of all time. I adore that game. Um, and I'm very, I'm still very excited for this remake. And a, a also, big thing happened during that state of play. The next PT. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what we're getting. This is, Calm down, killer. Calm down. So, I've been trying to, like, figure out what to say about this. And figure out how I feel about this. Because, let's be, let's be honest, right? You know, for the, for the past, like, 10, 12 years, our motto on this very podcast has been, fuck Konami, right? The same company that brought us Silent Hill, Castlevania, Metal Gear Solid, collectively, I think one of those games probably exists in most people's, like favorite games of all time in some way shape or form right um so how the fuck am i supposed to feel about what's going on with silent hill right now obviously they announced this huge revival of the franchise it's kind of not only just a revival of the franchise it's their like re-entry into the video game market in general which they've been out of for a, quite a while chris davis you're making a face like you disagree with me on that is, is that not accurate i mean they've been doing you know, outsourcing collections for several years, but more importantly, outsourcing. like they, outsourcing. they're also doing a revival of Metal Gear at this point. 
which we know nothing about, so I'm not even going to talk about that. But, like, all we have to go on right now is the fact that Konami has been ma- spending all of their money and time and focus and drive on uh, 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 p- Pachinko Machines. Is that the correct term? Yeah, Pachinko mobile Machines. Games. For, mobile games, Pachinko Machines for the, for the past decade. They got out of the, you know, the core gaming market a long time ago. And, and then COVID happened. And then COVID happened. Uh, I mean, I don't really know the Health direct. Clubs Im- were like a, as a big part of their business. And let me tell you, COVID probably didn't help with that. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That totally makes sense. Um, but anyways, long story short, we get to this point. They've announced Silent Hill is kind of their re-entry into this market. And they're going big. It's not just one game. They announced like a bunch of, they announced like four games all up front. Um, of which we have only seen the fruits of one of those games which is not even a game really and i guess that's kind of the crux of my argument. and if you want to start rolling this silent hill footage that i brought that's fine because i'm going to kind of well, segue what into, is the title of this one silent of hill video game well okay so during the state of play they and this was rumored i knew this was going to happen before the state of play even happened because it was heavily rumored for like a week leading up to this is that for the past like three years we've been hearing we've been they've we've seen screenshots of this game for about three years now of Silent Hill, the short message, right? Nobody really knew what it was, who was working on it, what the what the scope of it was or anything. And it turns out the short message ended up being a like a two hour free to completely free to play game that feels and I'll talk more about this in a second, but it feels very much like trying to capture the PT lightning in a bottle this is where I feel bad for them, right? Because that they Which is honestly that a, this it's was just about to do that, and it, it was trying like the to, opposite. Yeah, trying to create the magic of something like PT is you're never it's it's a it, you're gonna fail. You can't. It's not that's not really something I feel like you can do. I mean, you could maybe create a. I mean, and, and when I say trying to capture the magic in the bottle here, like there is a lot of imagery. There is a lot of tricks. There's a lot of just bits and pieces that that literally exist in PT, like the hallways repeating, the there, doors there's... slowly opening, the 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 crying baby in the sink thing happens. Um, although this time it's in a refrigerator. But there's inadvertently creating magic, and then there's trying to recreate magic, and those are two right. completely different things. And you know, you also got to remember PT was l- quite literally. Kojima doing his thing to try and build hype for his which horror by game, the right? way who was at this state of play which is crazy that it they were both in the same one right uh, yeah which is absurd. I don't think it's that right. crazy I mean you also gotta remember you the state of plays well it, it featured in the same it. well like featured in the same like pre-recorded then spliced together present like online presentation is not the same thing as kojima being on a stage while they're showing this yeah but like also the last time he was at a thing at the game awards he literally walked out of like a pt door like they were definitely evoking pt that is suggesting hey if you like pt this is kind of what i'm working on and now he's at a press conference talking about his other thing where they're showing off they're trying to pull their own pt and you know what good fuck konami because one of the things they did that's so fucked up is they took PT down and they don't let anybody have it or play it. And it's, it's, fucked it's up. it feels like a very petty thing to do because they had a falling out with the creator, which is, you know, whatever. There's probably a lot more to it than that, but whatever. You're right. It's bullshit. And, and I don't know if this was designed or ever. I mean, honestly, I don't really know why this thing exists in the state that it exists because it's a two hour. This might as well be a demo for a game that doesn't exist because it's well, free I mean, to play. It, it feels PT at it, the time was that so well right but it was it was a demo for what was supposed to lead into what eventually was going to become a real video game right this doesn't have the silent hills right this doesn't have the thing that it's le- inevitably leading up to well, this is its know. own I have no idea like there's like a million silent well, hills i'm telling you right? i mean well, I'm t- i mean th- i mean there's also possibility that like this is their first a full on product of, apart from ascension uh, and this is their way of saying, oh, yeah, we're definitely dedicated to Silent Hill and coming back to your video games. Let's attract some investors who can throw our money our way so we can make more products. Okay, so 
you're, I don't disagree with you. You're kind of stealing my thunder here a little bit, but just in terms of um, this this product, it, Konami's approach to this whole thing is some. It's. I mean, I get what they're trying to do. They're they're obviously trying to make a splash. They're trying to be like, okay, yes. Remember, we make video games. Remember Silent Hill? I know it's a big deal. A lot of people care about this franchise. And this is us showing you that we're serious about it by announcing all these projects, right? It's kind of like the instinct you, some, a, like, some, a creative might have to be like, satisfy and prove to people. It feels like they're trying to prove to people that they are back, that they are going to make more of these games by just kind of like scattershotting shit. And I get kind of the impulse to do that, but you would think that especially after being away and not doing this kind of thing for like 12 years, that they would be a little more careful about it. Um, so what we've seen so far is a episodic online interactive story that as a, as a huge fan of silent Hill, I feel nothing, no pull. Train wreck. No one. No, it was I mean, a laughing stock. I mean, yeah. I mean, I haven't really heard or seen anybody talk about it. Um, and this was the first thing I was actually going to play, obviously, because it's free and it's an actual like interactive piece of interactive media where I'm walking, I'm controlling a character, walking around a world, doing things. And that's where I'll talk about the short message, because a lot of people have been asking me how I feel. Some people have been going off in Discord about just losing their mind over this shit. And I want to be upfront because thinking about this for a long time, I understand why people are upset. I understand why this is not what people were hoping for. And this, and I understand this is the only thing we have to really go on at this point. But I still don't feel like this fucking Silent Hill revival has happened yet. Right now, it still all feels very theoretical. Um, <laughs> sort of. But, I mean, okay. it's out there. I mean, it's out there, but, like... This can't give me much... This still wouldn't give, doesn't give me much confidence because... No, if, of course if they not. Were, if they really were, were thinking that this was going to be, like, another PT... Like they are not really understanding much of anything. I well. think honestly, I think their I think their biggest mistake with it with with the short me message specifically. There's a couple things and that are obvious, but maybe the less obvious thing I think is the the fact that they very clearly tried to mimic certain things. Like they it was it's just too close. It's too similar. There's a lot of repeated tricks here. A lot of imagery that's just not as gracefully done not as effective and it's just inviting the comparison and it's that was a mistake it was a mistake um i do there are things about this that i don't hate but i also feel like this and i i hear a lot of people talking about because the reason Silent Hill in, at the beginning was so successful is because it, of its subtlety and the way it told its story. And the, it was very graceful in the way it told its story, I suppose. And this seems kind of way too heavy handed to be that. And I, I, I'm playing this thing. and I'm like, God, I feel like this game would be like twice as good as it is. If the main character just didn't talk just silent wow. and, there, there is way too many things that, like, I think a smarter game would have just trusted the player to glean from the environment, to glean what's happening around them. And instead, they rely on this character just kind of, like, saying what the author is thinking or what the writer, what the creator was, was trying to convey. And it's disappointing, right? You want subtlety. And I think that's what a lot of people are worried because a lot of people are like, well, now how do I... This is not give me a lot of faith in the Silent Hill 2 remake. I'm still looking well, who at these made things. This? As, who made this thing? Uh, it's a studio called uh, De Deca he he Maybe someone can look that up. It's, it's a weird name. It's like Deca Western Helix. Studio? Or, I saw Masahiro I Ito was involved in this. Yes. Right? Uh, Masahiro Ito did the monster design because there is one. Hexadrive. A, that makes sense. Hexadrive. Thank you. I don't know if that's. Oh. I don't actually. I, 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 it's, I don't know if that's a Western studio or a Japanese studio or what. I saw what they worked on. Maybe you can. You, you clearly had it in front of you, Chris Davis. Use your words. I, I looked them up on Wikipedia. They contributed to a lot of things. Um, right. Notable things like Res HD, Okami HD, uh, Microsoft Social Ops, uh, Zo2 HD, but also third things birthday. like The Third Birthday. Mm, yes. 
Mm. Oh, they're the they did uh, Type Zero. This is a okay dev, right? I mean, I'm not saying. Here's here's the thing. I I don't honestly. I think the biggest problem fundamentally with this with this demo here, outside of what I've already mentioned about the inevitable comparisons to PT, is the writing is just way too heavy handed. Silent Hill needs to be more subtle than this. Um, It looks it looks really nice. It does have some cool atmosphere and the themes that they touch on, like the things that they, the story they're actually telling about the character and like her relationship with her mother and how her loving mother started to turn into this like abusive person because of how you, of the choices she made when she was younger and stuff and how that's kind of like seeping into her daughter's life and stuff. It's actually really interesting. It's just told really heavy handedly. Which just um, ruins it, of course. Which kind of ruins That's it? It's awful. Um, it sounds awful. I mean, I mean, I, look, I guess I'm just hey, not. Here. They I'm also not as comfortable. I'm not Death as comfortable. As I, I, we're not talking about state of play be, yet, dude. You can be heavy-handed and like still kind of weird or interesting or like uh, poetic or you know, like the. <sighs> this is this is heavy-handed and poorly written and poorly considered and kind of. You know, again, uh, I, I, I think if this game didn't visually resemble PT as as much as it does, and if the main character was silent, and I'm not even necessarily she's a bad voice actor, I'm saying mm-hmm. if the story was conveyed through something other than her just talking. saying things and instead of, like it don't trust it doesn't trust the player, I think this game would be fine, and I think people would be whatever about it. Yeah, it, but the or, problem is even if you're, your best case scenarioing this. I'm like, not. Dude, uh, I, people. No, ask no. I'm, say, I'm saying, like, like Hill. even if best case scenario, what you're painting is still like a game that is like very common these days. Like this, these kinds sure. of first person horror games are a dime a dozen, and they're many of them are far more interesting than what's on display here, even in the best case scenario, yeah. right? Well, yeah. That, so, I mean, that, that's the thing is that this is. I hope I. I hope I'm not giving away the giving the impression that like I'm super pleased with this or I'm happy no. with the state of Silent Hill because that's certainly not. the I case. feel like your kids gloving it though, right? You're sugarcoating it a little bit. I mean, it no, sounds like I, this. I am. I am not comfortable making sweeping uh, assumptions about what we. As far as I'm concerned, the projects I'm most interested in and most concerned about are the re, the remake of Silent Hill Two, yeah. Silent Hill F, and Silent Hill Townfall. Those are the three games that they've announced that I think are going to be the most important and the actual things that I'm, I will, I want to like see for myself and judge this, but, but you don't have to protect this game to say that I'm not trying to protect this game. I'm saying I'm the kind of person, there are things in this that I like, there are things I see here. I'm like, this would be really cool if they didn't also do this, 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 and this, which Mm -hmm. fucking sucks. It's like, there's potential here. But they're squandering it. And I don't think that's a nice thing to say. I don't think that's a good thing. I think I'm being critical of this yeah. while also not. I think there are people flipping their shit and making and being like, yeah, it's people over. Are it's fucking bum, dude. Like, you know, they've been talking. To, we now have two Silent Hill games after all these years. You know, it's like I, we don't. We don't. No, we, a Silent Hill see, Ascension. Denial, not a bit. That, that's the thing, right? Like, or OK, you're not in denial, right? These are not full real games, but it is still like, you know, it is. Look, I've been look, saying I this. knew. Here, let me put it this way. I knew that Metroid Prime Federation Force wasn't a real Metroid game. Still felt bad. Let me tell dude, you. No, 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 dude. Metroid was gone me. for a long time and the existence of that game felt bad. No, I get it. You think I don't feel bad, but listen, listen to what I'm saying. This, and I've been saying this for a while now. What boggles my fucking mind about this is that this is Konami literally having a, like, they literally have five things in front of them, and they that that they're working on actively, and they have all they have all the freedom in the world to do to relaunch this revival, quote unquote, however they want, make the biggest splash. And the thing they've chosen to put the foot they've put forward first is Ascension and this a free online interactive story that not many people were going to engage with to begin with and a free two hour demo experience thing. That's not even really a demo because it's not really connected to anything in any significant way. But they're going for teasers and hype, you know, like PT was huge for them. Right. But like what I'm saying is 
and and the reason why I don't consider these real Silent Hill things, it's just like if if the, if they had if they had started this whole thing with like here's a remake of Silent Hill two, that's a big thing. That's a big deal. And if it was good, th- this would not have burned nearly okay. as okay. bad. Okay. Point understood, and I get it. I I agree. What did you think of Silent Hill two? At the state of play. Yeah. At the tra- the trailer. Okay. Here's another thing I'll say. Um, and this is like, this feels very much to me like, um, <laughs> so since the beginning of, or since the beginning of time, right? Talking about Silent Hill, nobody can talk about, specific, especially Silent Hill 2, nobody can talk about it without being like, but hey, that combat fucking sucks. Uh, and like, it's, or it's not a very fun game to play. It's not a very fun character to control. So what did they, what did they do? When the, with this, and this is not the first trailer. This is like at this point the third trailer, right? So they made a trailer. If you look this trailer up, they released it, the state of play on like YouTube. It's called Silent Hill Two Combat Trailer. It's a trailer designed to show off the quote unquote improvements they've made to the combat. And I know that's a red flag for a lot of people because the combat in Silent Hill is not supposed to be good. But I think to me, there is a difference between combat being good or bad and a character being. Or character that's meant to feel like, uh, uh, I don't want to say helpless. He's not helpless, but like, because the whole point of the the combat being of, of him not being a very dangerous character was to make you feel scared, to make you feel like you didn't, you weren't equipped to protect yourself or whatever. But at the same time, they made a character that was really that didn't feel good to control. So, what has been the consensus about the these? consensus in the trailer? A lot of people freaking out because combat was the focus of this trailer. And people were like, oh my god, they're turning it into an action game. I don't think that's what they're doing here at all. That's I think not what it looked like in the trailer. Well, if you look at the back half of the trailer, it's it turns into like a bunch of quick cuts of him like yeah, using different... Yeah, like, but he ain't doing um, like Devil May Cry combos or no, anything. It just no, looks like no, Silent Hill. Not. It looks like no. Downpour or Homecoming or something. They right? just turn, They just highlight, spent the second half of that trailer highlighting very quick cuts of him like engaging in combat with enemies and it made it look more like an action game which is not what what they show looked good it looked better than combat has ever looked for silent hill and that is the problem (laughs) it's a problem because like no but i mean no 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 no. here here, this is what i'm saying it's a double-edged sword because it's only a problem because inevitably it makes people it, it triggers people, makes them think, oh my God, they're turning it into an action game. When really all they're trying to do is respond to years and years and years of people saying Silent Hill 2 is not a fun game to, to control. The character is not a fun game, not a fun character to control. The combat was awful. It felt bad. So they're like, hey, look, we've tried our best to make combat not be boring or not whatever. And so the first reaction they get to that is, but you're missing the point of Silent Hill. And it's just like sweeping judgments being made about them trying to respond. Like they're, they're being very reactionary, which maybe wasn't the best idea, which is then setting off a chain reaction of people making sweeping assumptions. I don't know. I okay. think the well, I don't was... think those are real like comments, right? Okay, because so like, obviously they've been, they've been if... saying it like since homecoming, right? You know, Same right. Point. So they've been me... saying this thing about, about like, Oh, like, or the developers have been saying, we're going to improve the combat, right? And the and the fans have been going, oh, combat, what do you, how dare you even say the C word, you know? I'm saying, like, fans have been saying this for fucking decades at this point now, right? right. Like, like, but <laughs> you're still going to fucking hit things with the fucking pipe. And, like, did it look good? It like, is fine. there a way to... It looks, it like, like it, here's the thing. It's hard It's hard to even make a judgment based on a trailer like that. Because, like, at the end of the day, it really just comes down to how does it feel to control with a controller. And I have no fucking clue. I have so, no but idea. But, like, Silent Hill wasn't good because it felt bad to control with a controller back then. Like, My that, argument... That, that was, like... That's, like, a bad take anyways. Like, ever is, since the beginning. Okay, the way so, combat feels is, like, the least important thing about Silent Hill. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, as long as they aren't like suddenly turning Silent Hill into this like like super populated with monsters place that you're constantly engaging in combat, I don't really give a shit either way. Okay, so let me as as an outsider perspective, someone who has never played a Silent Hill game, mm-hmm. let, let let me share this, okay? So the the first thing I think of 
about Silent Hill is the exploration and the spookiness of what this yeah. game is supposed to be, right? Right. The The first problem is that they showed off combat before they showed off the rest of the game. Well, that's not necessarily true. Like, again, no, this is like true. the third trailer. Like, no, we I'm, have I'm seen... talking about like just dedicated gameplay, no cuts. Let me show me walking around the world. But to be fair, they haven't shown anything in that yes, regard. Yes, that's, that's part of the problem. They, they, they are very, being very controlling in their marketing of this game. Hey, again, we, we don't even have a release date for this game, even after this trailer. So, like, that stuff is coming, but it just makes me think we're not as far along in the development of this as I think a lot of people assumed. I don't even now, know if this game's coming out this year at this point. Now, as far as the actual content of the trailer goes, it wasn't very attractive to me specifically, because mm-hmm. looking at the combat from my perspective, it wasn't very reactionary. What they showed was basically the two same enemies over and over again, like half a dozen scenarios. So I didn't really get a feel of like the variety to be said there. So that that's a problem from an outsider perspective for me. Variety, combat variety is not really what... No, no, I, 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 mean, I completely ever... understand that, Brad. I understand that. I'm just saying visually... When you only show two enemies in a montage that's two minutes long, that tells me that I shouldn't expect much in that area. There is... and, and I know, I know what you're saying, that combat is not a central tenant, really, to Silent Hill. Honestly, well, outside the central ex- tenant I'm is shitty combat, something. and the series has always had shitty combat. So if it's shitty here, then it's very Silent Hill. I, I, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I feel like one way or the other, whether they succeed in making combat fun or or they end up just making another shitty combat thing, uh, uh, combat system in this game, it's it's not gonna like it's not gonna move the needle one way or the other. Like like yeah, I, mean, I don't think that's going to contribute good. to the quality it's, of this game overall one way or the other. Yeah, but it's it's such a, like this. Is what I'm saying, it was always a bad faith argument from the beginning. It's such a stupid like cop out to say, oh it controlled and played like shit because that made it scarier. Like it was like this weird chicken or the egg thing back then. And it's like, whatever, dude, like you can still have a, like the resident evil two remake was a very like modern resident evil game, but they they found a way to make it feel much different than like resident evil Four remake. You can still have it be good and polished and have good mechanics and, and still have it be a good, scary atmospheric game. Like, like these have always had bad combat systems because Silent Hill's always been kind of a little bad in budget when it comes to gameplay. But, but that's the thing though, Brad, what you just said about Resident Evil is that we are nearly five years on from the Resident Evil 2 remake. And that established a precedent for what we should expect for remakes to the audience. So if the audience goes looking for Resident Evil 2 remake quality and they don't see it, that's going to alienate them and it's going to rile them up. Let me just tell you this, and let me just let me just say this. Say this, and I'm not obviously I, I right, this, I'm speaking me. purely. I'm speaking purely because people keep asking me what I think about this or how I feel about Silent Hill Two, and then when I tell them I'm optimistic or I'm excited, they tell me I'm wrong and that I'm stupid and that fucking Silent Hill sucks. No one Konami says that to you. Hey, you shut the fuck up. This is this is my story time. Okay, listen, <laughs> listen. That's what people say with the You're verbatim. Stupid. Quote, quote unquote. People call me stupid. Like, listen, listen. Um, Anytime you're not allowed to call there's uh, Nick stupid unless you write it on a sticky note and give a, a give him like a hundred of them. There's three. <laughs> there are three trailers for this game. I think it is. I think it's three. There's th- three trailers for this game at this point. And anytime I'm watching one of these trailers and it's not combat focused, there's no hint of combat. I get a boner. OK, this game like. I, I see things that make me go, oh my god, I remember that I remember that place. That looks absolutely fucking gorgeous. It looks in, like like I recognize pieces. I recognize scenes. I recognize environments. I'm like, holy shit, this looks amazing. Could not really care less about the combat. If they make it fun, great. Whatever. If it's not gr- great or fun, whatever. No, like it's always been bad. The the moment the the bits and the the bits and pieces we've seen of James walking around the town of Silent Hill, seeing like the fog and how it how, you know how it creates the ambiance, the atmosphere of Silent Hill or whatever, and seeing like the host the inside of the hospital and stuff, and it's it looks amazing. I 
I'm so fucking excited for that, and I hope it delivers on that. I just kind of hope we can also stop talking about it until we <laughs> until they actually show more of the game. No, they're, um, they're never going to stop. It, there's a lot stop. here, and it's not just combat. I mean, I know and that's the stuff. I th- all the stuff prior to when the combat thing started at the beginning of the trailer, I was like, oh my god, this looks amazing! I cannot fucking wait for this. This could be fine. I, I feel like the jelly vision is like a. This is a bad sign. Like the way the jelly vision appeared in the rectangle around the edges of the screen. I'm like, this is like some cheap budget bullshit. Like, I hope that they, this is placeholder, you know, it, it, stuff like that kind of has me. I mean, this is a 2024 game and th- that's some fucking Xbox 360 shit they're doing here. I don't like that. Um, I've, I've heard know. bits and pieces for a while now that a lot of the, the, this marketing content was generated eight plus months ago. So, like, yeah, there's certainly a chance. And also, that. of course, like, again, no release date at the state of play. And, of course, they're going to be looking at feedback online. So, you know, if that gets under people's skin, that's probably going to tone it down or whatever. Who the fuck knows? Um, they have, there's a, a little, there's a a little lot, cheaper there, than I was expecting. There's a I lot of writing. There's a lot writing on this particular game as far as this revival goes. Um, if if Bloober fucks this up, God rest their soul. <laughs> you know, like, I just, and... I don't think, I don't know if they can bounce back from something like that. Trying to fa- trying and failing to remake one of the most beloved horror games of all time. Um, Honestly, I got avowed energy. Remember when we saw avowed recently and it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess it is one of these, but this is, this is sort of what I expected, but this is a little cheaper looking and feeling maybe than I expected. I think I this know. is what, like I'm waiting. It's like, of course this is what the combat is like. And, I, I am waiting why. to see the inevitable trailer or gameplay thing where it's like, here's like five solid minutes of like James walking around the t- the town of Silent Hill. And, and was he doing anything? Because when you walked around the town of Silent Hill and Silent Hill 2, you fought things. <laughs> they have. Well, yeah, of course, but like not a lot. Uh, it, atmosphere means a lot in this in this in this game and and the the balance of like combat to exploration is also a big part of that and that's the kind of stuff i want to see and you can't you just can't get that from watching a two-minute trailer so that's where we're at when it's a two-minute montage trailer two-minute montage which is all we've really gotten at this point is montage story montage combat montage whatever who the fuck knows um my point is i'm really i'm kind of bummed about the short message um, cause it's not a great foot to put forward and it's all the stuff we've already said about this. Um, and Ascension was dumb. It was a dumb idea. It, and I just can't believe they started with that, but like, I'm optimistic. I still, I still am excited to see what this Silent Hill F game is that takes place in like 1800s Japan. And I'm excited to see what Townfall is. Cause that's supposed to be like more like an episodic, like story, um kind of like a telltale style game apparently i guess there's definitely more Uh, potential in those projects but at the end of the day i'm always worried about konami right they're the ones who who kind of let this happen right ascension and short message and stuff even go out the door with with any sort of like quality control without any sort of quality control it's It's not something that like a capcom would do right and and i just feel like their idea of quality control is different than like the general audiences because I can see why they would look at something like Shatter, like the short message and be like, this is good because there are moments where I'm like, OK, this looks nice. And like, it, I mean, it certainly has high production value and it has like kind of just the general themes of Silent Hill. But like they're not looking at it with the fine. Tooth. They're not looking at it through the magnifying glass like a Silent Hill fan would be, which is weird considering they're the ones making these games and they're the ones who should be looking at it through a magnifying glass. but whatever my point I hope is you come out of all of this with at least one one good one of these that you really the really like and if, i'm you know, i'm the, worried it might not be the bloober team one because you some know of the concerns you have about subtlety and that short message i saw some stuff you know people zooming in on the silent hill too like there's some graffiti that says you reap what you sow and i'm like mm, okay also bloober could be team. placeholder also bloober could be team bloop. well like uh, like any at, at at this point these days, people are just so alienated and bummed out about those world graffiti, narrative world graffiti. Like the only game that uh, does that right at this point in the past 10 years is Alan Wake 2. And like, and it's what? true. And I mean, people are, are really kind of just bummed about that or negative about that kind of stuff in general. But like that kind of stuff well, existed. It's one it, of the it, themes of your subtle well, horror game. That, 
on the there wall. was there was that kind of graffiti in the original Silent Hill too. It just like the weird thing is like some of the stuff like that one screenshot you're saying with the you reprint you so thing. It almost was the equivalent of like like this wouldn't be so bad if it didn't look like it was written in Comic Sans. Oh, it wasn't really written in Comic Sans, but you know what I mean. Like it didn't really look like graffiti, and I was like, is that a placeholder graphic? Like they're gonna come back over it later with like something that looks a little bit more authentic. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Here's the thing. I just, I don't know. I'm, I, you know, you're right, Brad. I hope I get at least one good game. And if that game happens, I to think be it might be the, uh, the Annapurna one. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Here's Town the thing. Fall, Here's right? the thing. He, the reason why I'm putting a lot. Yeah. Townfall. The reason I'm putting a lot of, of, uh, a lot, a lot on the Silent Hill 2 remake in particular is because Silent Hill 2 is not a very easy. It's not a very accessible game. These days, you, if you want to play that game, you have to bust out either an old console and and go find track down a copy of that game, which is not easy to find these days. Or you have to jump through a bunch of hoops to like emulate it on a PC, uh, which is possible, obviously. But like, it's just not something that I can just be like, you know, I'm going to find I'm going to go I'm going to go buy a copy of Silent Hill 2 this weekend and play it on my PC. It's just not something. It's just not easy. So yeah, if they could somehow you absolutely fucking know that in the vein of the master collection stuff for metal gear that they're going to eventually do some kind of collections for silent hill god i hope like maybe not of the original silent hill two, maybe even not even three but they'll port like the 360 ones well dude you gotta remember you gotta remember the reason that original silent hill two or that silent hill collection they did was so fucked was because they lost a lot of the source code and had to like rebuild certain aspects of that game yeah and it was a dumpster fire Mm -hmm. like literally putting comic sans in the game because they didn't have the original assets and same thing happened the original kingdom hearts it's a lot of games actually it's i mean it's not super uncommon i just don't know whatever i mean the point is i i if they if they make a remake of silent hill 2 that is even if it's not objectively superior to the original if it's if it's like if it does a decent enough job and it and it taps in the nostalgia enough and it doesn't take too many left turns i'll be happy <laughs> you know what as a silent hill fan that's all i'm asking for right now man i want to be at least a little happy and right yeah, now i'm not also, but that's for okay. someone who's who's come to terms with the fact that maybe bloodstained ritual of the night is good enough like there's been so many good spiritual successors to silent hill out there in the indie space like so yeah many. you're talking to the guy um, who continuously like plays like pt clones and loves them all yeah, I know. Like, I put a visage on my like, top 10 games of the year, and a lot of that is because of how I feel about, felt about Silent Hill and how that's influenced other games yeah, in the industry. Shit. I know. Believe me, I, pl- I try to play a lot of stuff. Silent Hill has left a invaluable mark on the horror genre. I, I, I recognize oh, that. that. That Silent Hill-looking game where the characters are like, or the character looks like a Final Fantasy VII like, map character, where she's like very low-poly but it's like a oh it's like a like a you know it's like an isometric horror yeah game I, I, that shit looks so cool what is that called? It does, I, I uh, is it look it up is it hollow no not hollow body is it uh oh fuck i saw it i literally saw it pop up on my feed today it looks pretty cool um yeah. it's not signalis i know it's, that's what sterling said no, no, the no, game no. We're, we're thinking about is, is she is, looks is like she yet. looks like you know handless cloud from Final Fantasy 7 like like the map cloud you know, I played like, it. Uh, I played it during Steam Next Fest. Low poly. Uh, oh, you did. Oh. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is pretty. It's pretty cool. In fact, it just got announced they I get, they got picked up by a publisher. Assuming we're thinking of the same game, it got picked up by a publisher in the last couple mm-hmm. days. Um. Anyways, we can move on from this. That's kind of where I stand on Silent Hill right now. Thanks for indulging me. Okay. Uh. Let's just. I guess you want to just talk briefly about what did and did not transpire at the state of play in general. We, I feel like we've done the Silent Hill stuff, so uh, we're good on that. Briefly, uh, they Rise of the Ronin, with... I think, is looking really cool. Stellar Blade, I think it looks like... <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm not so sure about that. No, not Holston. Holston looks cool, but not that one. This one, she literally... The, no, it's, it's a girl Holston. who looks like a Final Fantasy VII, like, handsless character. Like, not not the battle model, the map model of a final fantasy seven character. I don't know what it's called. Uh, Rise of the run is looking really cool. You know, I I've been kind of like, you know, I, I trust team Ninja to at least make something cool, but that, that last showing looks pretty fucking cool. Honestly. Um, then they showed stellar blade. I think it, I don't know. 
I we'll I was really looking forward to seeing more of Stellar Blade, and I walked away from that feeling very underwhelmed. Well, I mean, they're like, okay, obviously you want to make us think that you're near, but you also, this is also a developer that makes that uh, Crow Country, I think it's called. Look up Crow Country. Um, the uh, they they're the they make this mobile game called Nikkei. You've probably seen the ads for it. They're like uh, jiggly women shooting guns. Um, N i k k e. Look that up. I don't know. I don't trust the developer. I think Stellar Blade might be okay, but um, whatever. Um, I, I, I think it was a bad showing, honestly. Um, and uh, what else did the state of play? Oh, oh, Death Stranding 2, of course. Death Stranding right. 2 looks fucking cool. Dude, Death Stranding 2 it was... Cool. Like, I remember we had this conversation before. We talked. Actually, we talked a lot about Death Stranding last week in terms of like, what would they have to do for a sequel, whatever. And it's like... They would have to. He would really have to lean into the weird, which is I feel like it's kind of hard to do considering how weird lean, the first game was. Lean into and, oh the weird. He's been God. leaning into, <laughs> into the. Well, no, 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 I know, but like, he they leaned set in a lot harder. They set the bar puppet, pretty high the for the. Was uh, so cool. The what? Oh yeah, the puppet was cool. The stop yeah, motion yeah, he, puppet. His, yeah, he is like stop motion, low frame rate. Like, yeah, don't put me on your butt. It's like yeah. cool, Mamir. Now that that yeah. had to be a God of War reference right there, right? Surely, yeah. Probably. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at all if it was inspired by it. Um, yeah, like, but you had a a the spirit of a baby possessing a robot samurai getting in a duel with the resurrected bad guy of the previous game, whose weapon is an a, a weaponified dude, guitar. Dude, that guitar fight was fucking sick. <laughs> it's just the guitar from Devil May Cry Three. Literally, yeah, she's uh, like, yeah, I think we all had that thought. Like, oh I my just, god, it's, it's fucking. I just guitar. want to know what Ko Kojima's like. Is it mushrooms he's on? Like, what the hell? Yeah. Where are the? That's such a tired like comment. You're right. Yeah, it's weird. But like, can we talk it's... about, like, dude? So, I didn't play much uh, any Death Stranding, but I keep forgetting. Y'all talked a lot game. about it, and I watched a lot about it, and I know what that game is like. Don't and worry, you they don't show, need to. They show oh, rising that's, flooding that's waters. Very they show rising dumb, flooding waters, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. They also show him walking across a sand dune. And let me tell you, in a game where just sta staying straight, like sta standing up, walking up a hill feels like a like a huge a challenge. Thing. Walking yeah. along a sand dune? Um, yeah, I'm interested to see how they handle that. Disaster, my God. The I, dynamic, so I think the they're going to dynamic snippets, weather. I think the, yeah, weather stuff is cool. I think, I think the gameplay stuff looks really cool. Um, the it weather like stuff is going really bigger cool, but, but also the comment about, oh, I see you traded your little blood rope in for a gun. And I'm like, OK, I think maybe we're going to get some real ass gameplay here. Uh, that's good. Real ass gameplay. Are you saying if it doesn't have gun, like an actual gun, it's not oh, real man, gameplay, come on, bro? You know, like Herman Brad and Holst I don't said, agree you know, on a lot of things, but like we agree here. No, oh, I, I'm not on. saying I want it to be Metal Gear Solid like you, Chris Davis, but but I'm saying... I, a lot of what I heard the about the complaints is that sick. is that the, the combat was like really shallow, right? You're just kind of like sneaking up to people and like hitting them and stuff. No, dude, the, I was taking bitches down with that rope gun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the while the combat was definitely not the main focus of the game by any means. You definitely had combat. Yes, you could use that rope gun. There were enemies to fight, but honestly, that was like twenty percent of the game. I um, think that might even the, be a little bit. You yeah, that, that, but the problem 10%. is it was only tw ten to twenty percent of the game. And the go play the division, Chris Davis. Like, just because there's not combat I... doesn't mean the game's bad. Well, first off, good don't threaten me with game. a good time. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking that like, huh? you have the director of probably one of the greatest stealth action games of the previous generation, of the Phantom Pain, and he makes trying something new. I know it's amazing. Trying something new, okay, but. The combat being nowhere an near as good. It's an, okay, it's well, an afterthought. It's not a combat. Hey, okay. Well, the other thing at the state of play was he announced that he is going to be, well, someone announced for him, hey, you know, you're working on that tactical espionage action game like you said you were going to, right? And he's like, I, yeah. Also guys, a movie. But guys, yeah. what the fuck? What is happening right now? Because he I just finished know. announcing a new IP with Jordan Peele. What the fuck is happening? Yeah, mm. he's stretching himself a little thin. Everyone's giving him all the money he wants, so he's doing. Dude, that's you know, true. Didn't he just like tweet a few weeks ago? He's like, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> yeah, we know. You can't you can't stop Tyrant, dude, you can't stop saying yes. His dollars, dollar he can't bills. stop saying yes to things. It's like you wanna make an um, action game? Yes. Do you wanna make a horror game? No, sure. It's everyone else is saying yes. That's the problem. They're like, he has crazy ideas and they're going yes and giving him money. So he's like, Yeah, okay. no, nobody will tell him no. Know, Sony's like it's... Sony's like, okay, Death Stranding is cool and all, and it sold pretty well, and people like it. But uh also, I know you're doing another one, that's okay. Sequels they make money, but like seriously. Are you ready for Metal Gear Solid now? Uh, we've let you do two Death Strandings. Let's bring on that Metal Gear Solid. Okay, well, well, it's, like, okay, it's, but it's going to be. And I can't like, believe okay. it's not Metal Gear Solid. Well, of course, uh, the project's evidently shit. called Scient. I think okay, that's just like you, the code you don't name. need to be. Well, so you don't need to worry about like it being too much like Metal Gear Solid because let me tell you, through all those different Metal Gear games, none of them were like each other at all. So he's going to make something different. Sure. Yeah. Um, and can y'all just at least put me put my 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 put me at ease and tell me that we're gonna get that OD game before we get this? Because God, I don't I want to see that uh, horror game way before I want to see this new Metal yeah, Gear well, clone. The OD game? Is yeah, no, no, for game? sure. The, the OD game is in pre production. This was this was the equivalent of Todd Howard coming out and saying, "Oh, yeah. and we're gonna make Elder Scrolls exactly. Six after he's, Starfield." He's announcing his intent to make a game. Yeah. I wrote this idea on a napkin. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's it sounds like this is what the Death Stranding team is gonna work on after Death Stranding Two. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, I think Death Stranding looks pretty rad. You know, I mean, the strangest thing about the state of play is that we only got one game. Only you know. We got one release date, and it was for Stellar Blade, which is coming out sooner than I thought, I suppose. When like, is it? Huh? Like April, I think, if I remember okay. correctly. Um, and then everything else after that was just like, you know, people were, I was fully expecting, especially when they started talking about Silent Hill 2, and then they, they shadow dropped the short message or whatever. I was like, well, we're definitely going to get a Silent Hill 2 release date, or at least like a window, like a like Q4, Q3, something, nothing. It just said currently in development. I was like, what is going on? Like, I feel like even though they showed a lot during the state of play, I still have no idea what, what Sony's year actually looks like. Because Death Stranding's 2025. That's not this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, so I, I, I want to believe that since it's, since it's February, they're going to save the good stuff for the back end of the year for a PlayStation showcase. Well, yeah, probably. I mean, we'll, of course, mm -hmm. get a showcase probably in June around E3 time or whatever. Oh, Dragon's uh, Dogma 2 looks fucking good. Dragon's yeah. Dogma 2. I, I highly yeah. recommend watching like the, well, whatever. There's a lot of stuff out there. But like, I, I think um, IGN did like a, hey, we played it for 10 hours and we're going to sit down, like from the beginning of the game, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about what this game is like, what it's doing. And what it's good at. And that was like a pretty good watch because it kind of reinforces like, okay, they get like the magic of that first game and they're really leaning into that stuff. And it's going to be special. Like you're in, and I think, I think it was a very good pick for Nolan. And I think you're a little off the mark there, Nick, with the score what? and all. And you'll see. We, we as, a, as a people say? who play, I'm saying, Drag's Dogma was before its time, and and a lot of people, especially critics at the time, didn't get it. I feel like um, they weren't ready. It's gonna pay the indie tax. I'm saying <laughs> we, we're living in a very different like world. We we evaluate games differently, right? We we live in a world where where Dark Souls went mainstream, like truly mainstream. Where Monster Hunters has gone mainstream. Um, Yakuza is fucking going mainstream. I'm saying like we're gonna people are gonna evaluate this differently, and they're gonna appreciate. Breath of the Wild. Think about Breath of the Wild. Baldur's Gate. Appreciate the things that we took, like the things that they value in this game are the things that we want games to be doing and not the other way around. Not what Believe Ubisoft me, does. I, and I, I, I truly do hope that's Dragon's the case. Dragon's Dawn was going to be rewarded for that, and you'll see. You'll see. I, here's the thing. I've Anything I may have said in the past, I mean, you I hope do. you're right. I, I do hope you're right. I really hope if anything I may have said that may sound negative, I hope I'm wrong. Because yeah, I mean, you're talking about the score. Like, like I'm like people who know, know. like we know it's the game we want, but I'm saying, I, I'm saying critics are also going to respond to this differently. Like they score monster hunter differently. Now this thing is going That's to true. be scored much differently than that first dragon's dogma. That's an April too, sure. right? Or is it may? Or is it March? Uh, oh my God. Is it March? I can't remember. The it's same March, day as Rise March twenty fourth, I think, something like that. Oh my god, that's sooner than I thought. Same day as Rise of the Ronin. Bad yeah, keep, move, move. Man, Rise of the Ronin. let's let's get 
let's get through the rest of the state of play because we got a lot more Man. to talk about. What else is We're there? Done. I feel We're like done. I feel We're like I've kind of. Play. Let's talk about uh, well, we don't need to do a four player minute. Let's just talk about it. No, wait, wait, hey, hang on. So there was a new trailer for Judas. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That looks important. Looked, Bioshock again. looked like yeah. weird Bioshock, which I'm cool. I'm down with. Yeah. Uh, it's um, it's fine. I, it's fine. Judas. I mean, it's, it's kind of we, interesting. Have we ever that, like, talked there's... about Judas? You know, the, I mean, literally biblical betrayer, like the most famous betrayal of all time. <laughs> In some circles, um, uh, and Ken Levine, like, you know, sacrificed his entire studio just to make Bioshock again, right? It's kind hey, of it's little, kind of yeah. weird. Why they call this Judas? A little weird. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, well, they didn't they didn't even put a a a year on for Judas. That that's no. probably twenty twenty five. This this was, this was a state of cool. play like that Bioshock. had. <laughs> Yeah, this is a state of play that had no nothing like not much in terms of release information at all, which is for anything, yeah. um, including Judas, which I was really hoping to see get some idea on Judas as well. Um, yeah. There was also uh, uh, they announced a remake of Until Dawn. Yeah, what the fuck? That, it's, yeah, what does that even mean though? I mean, remake, I mean, remaster. It's like I mean, a, it's, it's like it's Dawn. like. It's like a one to one remake. So basically the same game just with yeah. with like new more detailed assets, which I think pretty. actually it's like takes UE5, away from I think it of, is. Yeah, but like like some of like the, they they spend a lot of time focusing on like the, the like the killer's like weird looking mask and how much more detailed well, it's it like looks the now. Brothers it's like, remake or whatever. And it's, it's like, yeah, okay, it's like cool, cool story, bro. I mean, we like that first game, but this is seems pretty low not low effort, just it's not an ambitious remake. This is just low hanging aspect. fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, new art yeah, assets. It, cool. How high can it, we get? Did it need to exist? I don't think so. I mean, yeah. I feel like they still haven't managed to like recapture that last the magic game was on game. the PS Plus. You know, it's like, <laughs> whatever, dude. It's just until dawn. It's a cool game, but are you gonna get Rami Malek to come in and like do some post Oscar winning cool shit? No, <laughs> it's just until dawn again. Uh, what else uh, is there? Anything else? Also, for my personal benefit, uh, Dave the Diver was announced for PlayStation Five. For your personal May benefit with Godzilla DLC, so oh, I was like, "Fuck I yes!" That's true. Godzilla yeah, that's true. Me, that made me Man, so happy. Chris, it's Chris Davis's like year. It is always he, a good time to be a Godzilla fan. Did he play Dave the Diver? Yes. Uh, yeah, he did. Oh, I played that, a lot right. of Dave the Diver. Oh, is that one of those ones you saw on his top ten list? And you're like, I didn't even know he played this shit. That is Who knows? One. Find out tomorrow. <laughs> I said um, nothing. <laughs> also, uh, so we actually got PSVR two games. Oh, um, come on. Okay, here here are the catches oh, of them. Oh, the Metro. One one. Of you them, want to mention Metro. Uh, well, I do want to met- I'll get to that in a second. One of them, Legendary Tales, is a port of a Steam VR game from two years ago that's still in early access. Uh, and cool. then the other is a Metro spinoff called Awakening. Uh, by Vertigo Studio, who's responsible for the Arizona Sunshine game. So, an experienced huh. VR developer is making a Metro game, and it, and to their credit, it looks like it's taking a lot of cues from Half Life Alex, which I'm always okay with because Half Life well, Alex is so unprecedented. Took a lot of cues from Half Life. Yeah, but I'm talking yeah. about in terms of like the way they handle, like, you know, your like how your hands are are used in the game and how, you know, it's just the way you are integrated into the character in the world felt very half like Alex to cool. me, which could be cool. Yeah. And also but, it's, it's, I think it's important to note if you are a Metro fan that this is separate from Metro four, which is also actively in current in active uh, development. So at four uh, a, if embracer doesn't embrace them, that mind, scares the fuck post, out of me every day. We're living in um, a post Asgard's wrath two worlds. So. Also, also Metro awakening is not an exclusive. It's also going to MetaQuest and steam VR. So like so you, they still so don't have any exclusive game. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying like the, the, this would have been the moment to announce the Astrobot game. And like it would have been, it fucking yeah, would have been. been. Yeah, you're right. That, what, what the, the fuck? actual fuck wrong. are they doing? They're Sitting sending it out to ball. die. They are killing this faster than the Vita, it feels like. They literally have launched, a mascot on their hands. Dead, Chris Davis. You're, this conversation is a year late. It launched dead. I'm hoping the Astrobot team's not making a VR game. I'm hoping they're making something for everybody because I said this last so week, they want to sell two good. copies Dude, of it. Come on. I said this last week and it, I, I still wholeheartedly uh I, I I think the way forward with Astrobot is to make a game that can be played in or out of VR that for everybody sure. can enjoy it. 
Yeah, um, yeah. So it's kind of like, like they literally have, I think one of the most powerful mask, like mask potential mascots on their hands. Oh, for and definitely, just, he could be a mascot. Yeah, they're squandering it. It's you know, I would say crazy. the same about Sackboy, and then they turned that into a actually a pretty cool platformer, and no one bought it. I bought it. Yeah, I mean, thanks, no one. The I mean, smart people bought it. You right? were, Put it you, yeah, yeah. Okay, Smart guys, point. we need to wrap up because we're we're coming up on two hours here. So why don't we why don't we we'll save Xbox for next week because I think we're gonna find out a lot more anyways. Yeah, next, next week. week we'll actually have something that's not just rumor. I mean, we kind of know what's gonna yeah. happen, but I we'll we'll actually have details next week to talk about. Um, so we only we have rumors and theories week? to work on right now. Yeah, we don't. You know, we have journalistic integrity. We're not gonna spread rumors. <laughs> 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 You mean you didn't research the topic? Is that why it's just, just yes? That's correct. That's correct. I didn't research the topic. Okay, um, let's go ahead and wrap up with a four-player minute, shall we, Brad? Why don't you start us off? Uh, my four-player minute about how Xbox lost the console war. Get fucked. LOL. Starfield on PlayStation. Halo on PlayStation is gonna be crazy. Oh man, but seriously, um, I don't know. What my four-player minute is about my recent poor decision. Um, you know, I came to the conclusion that I never need another mobile game. I have Slay the Spire, I have Slice and Dice, I have Into the Breach. But then, you know, sometimes you wander a little bit and you go looking, but maybe there can be a fourth in this this perfect trinity. Maybe it can be a, a quattro entity. And, um, you know, I looked around and downloaded some things. It's not easy. It's not easy living up to the greats, in my opinion. Um, so I downloaded a DS emulator and now I'm playing Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, you know, a game I've played some uh, about is that the one with the snow fight, little. snowball fight? No, I mean that's the first Tactics Advance. Yeah. Oh, uh, this okay. is the sequel to Tactics Advance. Which, you know, I have a lot of nostalgia for those games, even though if I ha even if I have some of my some like uh, frustrations with those not, games as well. That's not War of the Lions? And the second one is Chris Davis. You're out of your element. Uh, I in, am. In, uh, That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah, War of the Lions <laughs> is a remake of Final Fantasy. No, this Tactics. is uh, Tactics Advance Two, uh, which was a DS game, and the bizarre system was uh. was annoying. But you know, you can use there's like mods and like cheats are built into the DS emulator I'm using. Anyways, it's a good. What I, what I looked up is good DS games that are touch only, mm -hmm. and I saw this on that list. Is like, oh, you can play that game touch only, which means I won't have to use like virtual like. Yeah buttons you know which is are pretty easy to do anyways on a phone with the size of the shape of the screen uh so yeah uh so i'm playing that i was like oh well i love me some tactics events i mean i love me some tactics and tactics events there's things i like about this series and you know it's it's a pretty good phone game let me tell you it's a good emulator the the D, what is it called it's good it's a good emulator to have on a phone and there's a lot of good touch games that would be good for it obviously like phoenix rice game yeah drastic for sure drastic good 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 uh emulator good on your phone if you want to play some good uh touch touch uh ds games there's there's a lot there's a lot um like those zelda games like those zelda games those were touch touch Ooh, games yeah, 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 yeah. um anyways yeah i don't know i didn't really have much else except lol get fucked phil spencer's out He's out. He failed. Get fucked. Xbox lost the console war. All right. Before uh, <laughs> moving on, let's get to throw it over to Chris Davis. Why are you making that face, Chris Davis? This you have no dog in this Chris, race. Chris you Davis, you kind of respond. <laughs> yeah, you have no dog in this race. You don't care. No, I'm just I'm kind don't of fascinated that I didn't know that Advance Two existed. Like I I just oh, started yeah, looking that's... up. I'm like, wow. That's was, kind of interesting. I mean, okay. Let me tell you, it wasn't a successful game, which is probably where that series <laughs> went away. I mean, I I don't know. I'll, I need to read more into it. My my thing this week, my final thought. So, Capcom today started soliciting no, no. community feedback. Uh, for they've done this to us already. Yes, <laughs> but like. not quite on this scale before. Like they've sent out like uh, customer surveys in the past that that were just like you know, I don't even know why things. they need to ask people. Like, of course we want 
we, of course we want sequels to Onimusha and Dino Crisis. People have been screaming this from the rooftops for years. Yes, 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 yes. Show yes. A lack of confidence and vision. I don't think it's a good sign. I no, I I, I agree with you, Brad. It it feels like they, I, to me. It feels like they looked back at the hype of the Resident Evil 2 remake of announcement and they want to like re-engineer that that moment. And they they want to do it by not learning their lessons behind the development of uh, Mega Man Legends 3 with the community involvement. Um, so they're soliciting a survey of the community. It's it's a flashy thing that you go through and you list the IP that you'd like to see come back and the reasons you want for them and like what consoles so and things like that. <laughs> it just feels it, gross. I wouldn't say it feels gross. It feels somewhere between gross and desperate. I don't know what the middle ground is for that. Yeah, you're right. But that being said, it feels if this is an opportunity end. for us to get a new, get, get word to the, the management that, we want a new Onimusha. We want a new Dino Crisis. Know, things like point. that. Which do we want more, though? That's the real question. I mean, my point is that, like, writing the like writing in an answer, like, just please make me another Onimusha, is just, it feels <laughs> so pathetic. It's like, if you won't just make the sequel, like, why do you need me to tell you to make this when everybody's been screaming this for so long? Just fucking either Onimusha's make it or don't make it. To pull off. I think Onimusha's harder to pull off. We also have a lot of, like, samurai content in <laughs> in Make games these days you cowards yeah and like all the dinosaur stuff is like like fucking lame ass indie games that chris davis is hawking over there right <laughs> what i'm saying i'm saying you know you know what i'm talking about no i don't I, okay any don't indie fall. game that has a dinosaur in it you're you're dropping links to every day come on now no I, i'm <laughs> saying i mean that's not I'm just, sure false. baby i which is hard to pull off I think yeah. they should just take the. They just need to ha take the people who are making the Resident Evil remakes, and like have them do one with dinosaurs. Just give us Resident Evil Four remake with dinosaurs, and like that's what I've always wanted. Ever since the yeah. original Resident Evil Four, that's all I've wanted for Dino Crisis, right? Yeah. Just, just make that sort of fun, crazy, cinematic, well-paced action game uh, with dinosaurs. You know. Yeah. Take the Resident Evil Four gameplay, do Dino Crisis, and call it Dino Crisis Two two and there you go we're good you're good just Everyone make something wins. that's not down of crisis three for the love of christ let oh, oh they they've basically <laughs> yeah, written that that's out of existence at this point. They, yeah that's exo primal yeah this yeah they don't have to worry about that but you know it's like those games didn't sell like resident evil so it's like well if we're gonna do that let's just do another resident evil that's kind of how we ended up where we're at right because ani wusha and dino crisis didn't sell like resident evil yeah. People well, I mean, like, games. I mean, the Onimusha remake it or the remaster it didn't do sit good it sales bombed. wise. Supposedly, yeah. their a two was already into pre production before they canceled. It they based were testing sales their waters. They did it with Darkstalkers as well. They're like, look, if if you want this series to come back, buy this shit, and then no one did. And and also, like, okay, like, we were right. Look, I we, think we, we can almost be certain that Kenitsu Gami at one point started life as an Onimusha game. Eh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't look very Onimusha. But that game's listen, coming in. It looks kind of cool, right? So Listen. Just be happy we, about a new IP. If, if, if there was ever a good time to try to revitalize like a Dino Crisis, or even maybe an Onimusha, it would be now. In the wake of all these amazing Resident Evil remakes, like... I'd say it'd be about four years ago, but... I mean, like, they're already kind of missing the boat. My point is, the Resident Evil remakes have been successful. Resident Evil is more popular than it's ever been. And people would see, this from the studio that brought you Resident Evil, and then see dinosaurs, and it'd be look beautiful. They'd be like, oh, yes, fucking, yes, sign me the fuck up. I mean, I there's... Think there... be an, I think it'd be a no-brainer. Yeah, I, I also think that we have to think back to the fact that, like, Devil, uh, Dead Rising 5 was in development at one point. And they canceled mm -hmm. that because of how four was received. Nobody gives so a like shit about that, right? between that, between what happened with Onimusha, I'm wondering if there's like a crisis of confidence in their back catalog and they're, cool. they want to find they're a way to not have to invest the money to create a whole new IP and everything that entails with that. And instead look at their back catalog and say, okay, we'll let the fans dictate 5% I mean, of what we just, actually just want not, to do. Not a good way to do things, but whatever. But that, no, to to that regard, just because everyone online says, hey, we want this, we want this, and maybe they do, 
um, they can still put out a shitty game that yeah. no one likes. Uh, you know, Absolutely. That's, that's the thing. Or those it people matter. screaming everyone wants it. it. Or the people mm-hmm. who say they want it might still not buy it. <laughs> or, yeah, like, look numb. what happened with, like, Mirror's Edge 2. We love Mirror's Edge so much. Come on, we just want another yes. one. And then they did one, and no one bought it. And it's fucking cowards. was like, you motherfuckers, you said you wanted it. You got us again. <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, we really are in a hell of our own making. All right, can we move on? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Nolan's turn. What you got, Nolan? I can go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, late, lately it's been, you know, I've not been playing still uh, modern games. Uh, I, I kind of uh, accidentally fell into a Binding of Isaac hole. Um, oh. I've been playing a lot of that. Um, I, I, I don't know. Like, Steam, Steam won't tell you how much you've played recently. The Steam um, counter won't go that high for some reason. But but, but I do know it's probably over, a, like, it's probably close to, like, 100 hours in the past, like, month or two. Um, <gasps> no well, it's, it's it, well, there's a lot of stuff from, the, like, the DLCs that I never ended up doing. Hmm. Um, I was just, whenever I'd play the game, I would just kind of just do a random run with no uh, goal in mind. Um, but now that I've kind of been going through, I've been going through with the idea of unlocking characters and different uh, like runs and stuff like that. But anyway, so I've been playing a decent amount of that, um, which I still enjoy. Uh, but that being said, um, not that I wasn't ever going to play it. Uh, but finally, after kind of talking a little bit more about uh, Infinite Wealth uh, tonight, I'm, I, I bought it uh, and I'm going to be playing that soon. Nice. Uh, like I said, it was never a question the of is yeah. back on. It was a question of when, uh, and the uh, when is now. Um, I'm, yeah, I was always hyped slut. for that game. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. I mean, maybe, maybe I saw you playing Scarlet the other day, you motherfucker. Oh, dude, I've been playing a lot of Scarlet still. They, they, they I, I've been trying to keep up with it because they do events often, um, and uh, I kind of fell off of it for a while. Um, and then I missed out on a bunch of stuff. And a lot of that stuff is like, oh, we're doing this event for this weekend. And then who knows if it will ever come out again. Um, and so I've been trying to keep up with that. Um, but plus, Brad, there's also that I, I never like finished, finished the DLC. Hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I, I play Scarlet still every once in a while. They and have, I've also they been. They have Sujimon raids, like time Sujimon raids. That's in... exactly what they do in Scarlet and Violet is their one? raids. Yeah. You know, I'm. I just looked up your Steam profile, Nolan, and it says you've only put 324 hours into the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Like I would assume. Well, no, that's because uh, probably twice as much on PS4. Um, Uh, uh, When I first got into Binding of Isaac, I was doing it on PS4, um, and then I ended up getting it on Steam um, mainly because uh, there are there's a particular one particular um, mod uh, from the Steam Workshop that will give you item descriptions in game. So previously when I was playing, you know, like there's not two items in this game or three or four. There's like 2000 something items. I cannot remember what every item is. I know the main ones, um, but then the mod essentially just puts up a little thing. It's like, hey, this is the name of the item. This is what it does, uh, blah, 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 blah. And it's like super helpful, uh, especially because uh, the problem with Binding of Isaac is synergies. Uh, sometimes synergies are very beneficial. Uh, sometimes they can hurt you. Um, uh, and so you really don't want synergies like uh, like which is like honestly i don't think it's talked about enough how well uh every item in that game can uh, like interact with each other there are a few that one will override the other the mind it, it is insane how crazy things can can stack on top of each other uh but anyway that's why i ended up switching so i don't have an actual record of how much i played on ps4 my assumption is is close to like 300 maybe a little more hours i played a lot on the ps4 even a little little curiosity in pal world no one um pokemon really survival game which both seem like your lane i I know exactly what it is The, the problem with that brad is is i would have to play with other people um, and I know there are people in the community who play it and that's fine, but that's also one of those things where it's like, well, now I got to set up time uh, to do it and, and, and whatever. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like a little more complicated. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, maybe one day, uh, but not at the moment. You're at saying least. community night, next community night, power worlds on game pass. I mean, I would Dang. be fine to do it for a community night for sure. All right. That's how we get you. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Thank you, Nolan. Uh, so my final thought this week, I'll kind of keep this brief. I uh, Last night, I was going to jump on and stream some Persona 3 Reload, which I am playing. Um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, I ended up, I forgot it was Steam Next Fest, and um, I ended up playing demo for two games that were at... at for a while, we're just kind of games that I was like, oh, those look interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing more about them. And now I think both of them sit pretty high on like my most anticipated games uh, of the year uh, list. And one, the first one was Indica, uh, which I don't even know how to tell you what this game is other than to say it is a beautiful, like stylized, but like also ultra realistic, like third person puzzle platformer action game not really action game puzzle platformer where you play as a nun who is going on this like journey of self-discovery with the devil um and it has like all these it has like this really weird kind of unexpected like music that looks sounds very video gamey like it does not it i don't know i don't know how to if that has like moments of like pixelation and uh and it's like kind of like retro style gaming music on top of this like ultra realistic super atmospheric kind of like semi horror this game a horror game yes it is it's kind of a horror game like it's super kind of creepy and unsettling but it's also kind of like weird and like the it actually gives me it actually it's kind of giving me like moon dawn vibes if you remember it was on my top 10 games okay. of that year all right yeah um, it's a horror game. but it goes farther than that game in terms of like just juxtaposing what what looks the, the very kind of like her. Wild. The trailer, just go watch the trailer. It is weird and wild, and some people might watch the trailer and be like, "Whoa, this looks strange." I wonder what the actual game is like. It looks like that. It it looks like that. It plays like that. It has that weird like vibe. Um, Sterling Sky in chat makes a good point. It says shit looks like an A twenty four film, and it huh? that's that's accurate. Um, Go play it. The demo is wild. I uh, I only tuned into like the last few minutes of you playing that demo. That final like in screen is. I yeah. mm, uh, uh, that it's was crazy. fucking also, weird. Also, like one of the, like, one of the key mechanics is like, you, well, not one of the, like there are certain moments where you're like trying to navigate this this building that's like kind of falling apart and. She had like the devil is in her head, so you can hear him like talking, like trying to like whisper, like to you know do horrible things and like making her question her faith and stuff. And she like starts praying, like you can hold a button and you'll start praying, and the world turns like red and like the world like compresses together. So like all of a sudden things that were broken apart come together, and then you can walk across them. So when she stops praying, it it goes back out to like normal and shit so like you're using that to kind of like manipulate the world and move around in it it's just it's so cool i can't get over how cool like just the vibe the the it's it's a game to look out for um and the second game i tried last night was pacific drive which is that uh which has kind of been on my radar for a while but i didn't really know what to feel about it ed actually picked it up for fantasy critic and now there's a demo out and it is 100 percent gonna be my jam kind of like a semi-open world uh, survival game where you're focused on driving around and, like, building and improving your, like, car, which is basically, like, a station wagon. And But it's... It, you're. I would imagine by the end of this game, it's going to be like you're driving around the world in the Ecto-1. Like, it's like you're building it up and, like, improving it and creating all this cool, like, science, te like, technological shit that's, like, mm. strapped on the top of the car. But it's also kind of a semi, like, horror game because you're, like, exploring, like, a radioactive zone and shit it's it's so cool it's got a lot of layers it's it's it makes me think of like mad max or you like always like kind of improving your car or something like yeah, that a little or... bit but like yeah way deeper than that because it's also it's mm. also very much like a survival game like you're going around harvesting things and like you have like a scrapper that you can use to like find broken down cars and like buff, like break them down for like metal and rubber and glass and then use that okay. to like craft things and then slap it on the car it's cool um like even the like short like hour long demo I, that I played, it was like there's so much, there's just so much to kind of like wrap your head around, and like the controls are just kind of overwhelming. I think at first, and that was maybe that kind of put me off, but I feel like it's just because it's deep. So after you play a few more hours, it'll probably all kind of like snap into place. But uh, man, definitely something to keep your eye on. I I think that game looked cool, but now I think it's like I think this is pretty much gonna be unless they like unless it ends up being like 
just like really bad writing or something, which I don't think is the mm. case because the demo certainly doesn't give that vibe. Uh, I think it's going to be fire, <laughs> which it honestly, nice. it comes out at the end of this month. So like a week before Final Fantasy seven rebirth. So actually like <laughs> next week or the week after that. I don't oh, know. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's my final thought. So that's the end of our show. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight while we talk about video games, as we usually do. And um, we'll be back next week to talk about more stuff. There's lots of stuff coming, lots of lots of stuff to talk about in the future. And, of course, we'll probably do uh, some community nights here in the not-too-distant future as well, play some games together, and that's always fun. Uh, in the meantime, one last reminder, go watch our top ten videos. If, you, if you're into that kind of thing and you enjoy and you watch the videos, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and we'd love to talk about games. And if you're interested in talking about games, join us in Discord at discord.gg slash four player. That's the best place where you can hang out and talk to people like yourself who also like to talk about games. So um, anyways, in the meantime, guys, be safe out there. Be good to each other. And of course, play video games. We'll see you next time. Good night. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.